Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to call to order the September 5th, 2023 City Council Special Meeting to order. Roll call, please. Do we have a clerk? Oh, gotta wait for the clerk. Bill, could you move that this way? I can't see who's on Zoom. Please. If you could wait a minute, we have to wait for the clerk. Yeah, I can't. Okay, we, uh, we're going to have to wait a minute for the clerk. She is here, but she'll have to do re roll call first. So we'll give her a minute. Okay. Is Denise on Zoom? Yeah, Jim Tillotson is on Zoom. No, Jim, you're all set. We're just waiting for the assistant. Yes, I'm here. Thanks. Okay, could you have roll call now, please? President Laflam? Here. Roy? Here. Tillotson? Here. Zigorowski? Councillor Zigorowski? Not here yet. Through the chair. McAuliffe? Here. Brooks? Here. Lopez? Here. Balak here? Here. Krampitz? Here. Dobos? Boucher? Here. Labrie? Here. Pinia Costello? Thank you. Also participating on Zoom tonight, we have Councilor Tillotson, Councilor Lopez, Councilor, who else? It's hard to see. Any other city councilors on Zoom right now? McCullough. McCullough. And Councilor McCullough. So small. Okay. Partic okay. In compliance with the open meeting law, the city of Chicopee is broadcasting live and for future broadcast this meeting on Chicopee TV. Is anyone in the audience here video or audio taping this meeting? Please state your name and reason for doing so. Seeing none, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Mayor John View to present the mayor's briefing. Thank you, President Laflam. We have many mayor's orders, so I'll try to get through them quickly. Just, uh, I know you're gonna be here for a long meeting. We'll start with Mayor's Order 1. It's the appropriation of $365,400 from the available funds in the receipts reserved for appropriation PEG access cable account. This was on your agenda at your last meeting. There was a typo in the actual order, so we're bringing it back today. And what we're doing here, this is uh, to cover production director salaries. It's done every year. Uh, it also includes part-time staff and also facilities and equipment. And I know that Andrew Vernon is on to answer any of your questions that you may have. And thank you for your consideration for Mayor's Order 1. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Mayor's Order 2 is the appropriation of $25,961.05 to the following named account. Human Resources Special Account for Indemnification of Police and Fire from the Available Funds and the Stabilization Fund. Uh, we do this uh, very frequently, if not monthly, and this is, we're self-insured and this pays for our medical bills. Mm -hmm. Any questions about Mayor's Order 2? Thank you for your consideration. The next few orders are, is the purchasing of capital equipment that we use to maintain our fleets in many of our departments and also used to make sure that our facilities are working properly and uh, the capital committee meets on usually a couple of times a year. 
we come together as a group, which includes the finance team, many department heads that are instrumental in uh, putting requests in to making sure that the departments run fluently and that services are provided here in the city of Chicopee without a hitch. I'm gonna start with the first one, that's a mayor's order three. That's the appropriation of $146,370 to the following named account, City Hall Maintenance Special Account for Main Library, HVAS, HVAC controller, replacement from the available funds in the stabilizations for capital budgeting account. I, I'll just uh, quickly say that we've had many issues with the library's heating and cooling systems over the years. Uh, this should rectify those issues. I, I believe Dave Rice, our facilities director, is here. Uh, Dave, anything you'd like to add about Mayor's Order 3? Yeah, this will, this will bring the system online with what we have at City Hall and the public safety complex. It, it'll run more efficiently. It'll also allow us to remotely manage it with the same platform that we have at the other two buildings. Um, and it'll alleviate a lot of the issues we're having. I have staff that have to go up on the roof to manually adjust the temperature for the units because the system doesn't work as it should. So this will fix all those issues that we're having over there. And uh, hopefully, knock on wood, have no problems going forward. Thank you. Any questions about Mayor's Order 3? I just want to President make, yeah, I just want to make a quick comment on this. this. This one and the next one are very important because it not only allows him to see what's actually happening from his office, he can uh, adjust stuff from there too, which will save energy in the future. Uh, so this is very important. I also like to mention that uh, Councilor Lopez is now present at the meeting. Continue, Mayor. Okay, any other comments? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 4. It's the appropriation of $119,642 to the following named account, City Hall Maintenance Special Account for Fire Station Number 8, James Street, BAS, HVAC Controller Replacement from the available funds in the Stabilization for Capital Budgeting Account. I know our fire chief is here, uh, pretty self-explanatory. They're having the same problems with their HVAC unit, and this will enhance and upgrade the, the controls and, and I believe some of the actual equipment as well. Chief, anything you want to add? Um, the only thing I can add is in my experience, the same uh, problems that they're having at the library, but uh, all the credit goes to Dave Rice for researching and getting a vendor in here to get the proper controls there. That was all his, his project. Yeah, and with, with that fire station, um, especially in the winter, it, uh, the apparatus bay, they have a problem regulating the temperature with the current system that's in there. So this will make that system also work on the same platform that we have at City Hall, the public safety, and uh, at the library once we uh, get them all swapped over. Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 5. The Mayor's appropriation of $240,710 to the following named account, police special account for weaponry equipment from the available funds in the stabilization for capital budgeting account. I know that Chief Major is here. If you look at your background information, what we wanna make sure is that our law enforcement uh, division has the proper tools to keep not only themselves safe, but our community safe. And uh, this is a request for upgrade of weaponry in the police department. Uh, Chief, anything you want to add uh, about the age of our current weapons uh, and uh, the advancements that we'll see with the new weapons? Sure. Uh, I appreciate everybody's time tonight. The weapons we currently have are, are going on six years old, and normally it's a um, seven-year turn-in for, for the weapons. That's for the handguns. And what we're looking to do is upgrade and add a, um, a new optic system on it, basically a red dot. Mm -hmm. And I have a little bit of information. I'm not sure if that's been passed on to you or not. But uh, nationwide, the officer involved shooting accuracy for the weapon systems with just the iron sights is approximately 22%. Uh, and that doesn't differ differentiate between ambush style shooting, spontaneous threat versus uh, distance engagements. That means that only one out of five rounds fired strike their, strike their intended target. 
the studies done in our own department with officer-involved shootings have seen an accuracy rate of 34%. Uh, In-house study using 25 different officers of varied age, years on the job and experience, shots taken at varied distances from 5 to 15 yards with time constraints and physical movement to simulate mild stress, shots taken static, shooters fired 25 rounds with iron sights and then, and then the pistol-mounted optics system with no coaching or advanced instruction. The iron sight accuracy was noted as 68%, and the pistol-mounted optic accuracy is 91%. The officer who put this together is one of our firearms instructors, and he also added, as an instructor, I am unable to achieve that kind of improvement in students using only iron sights without extensive one-on-one -on -one training, which is impractical given the uh, department size and training constraints. And why are all these numbers important? Reduced misses mean more rounds on target, which means the target is stopped quicker with potentially less rounds fired. Reduced misses also mean less errant rounds that could potentially strike property and potentially innocent bystanders. Nationally, the average city settlement cost for an officer involved shooting uh, with a miss when a bystander is shot is $300,000. And if an innocent bystander is killed, the number is $2 million. Chicago just awarded 16 million last year for a grandmother that was killed as a bystander in a domestic related officer involved shooting. So the, the biggest push for this is the accuracy involved in the weapon system to be able to stop a threat quicker and definitely to limit liability for errant shots. I have a question for you, Chief. Questions? Yes, sure. Councilor yeah. Balakir. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Th thanks, uh, Chief, for shedding some light on this. I think it's, it's good that uh, we're also be able to get some uh, trade-in value with the Glocks. Yes, sir. So that's, it, it looks like, according to the documentation, it's going to be at least $50,000 that's going to be taken off the cost. So that's, uh, that's good. Thank you for doing your homework with that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Roy. Chief, what caliber are we using? The are nine millimeters Glocks. Nine Nine millimeter Glock. It's not a hollow point, is it? The the type of ammunition we use. Yeah. I believe it's a hundred and forty-seven grain. Please don't hold me to that. I, I can double check, but it is a uh, hollow point. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Chief. Mayor's Order Six is the appropriation of three hundred and ten thousand dollars to the following named account. Fire special account for repaving apron and parking lot at station number four from the available funds in the stabilization for capital budgeting account. I know that this has been on the list for quite some time and I know that Chief Stamborski has been pushing for it and uh, the capital committee has decided to move forward with this project. Um, I think it's going to make it a lot safer over at, at that station and uh, station four chief and anything you'd like to add. Uh, no, just that uh, it's a badly deteriorated lot and it's an accident waiting to happen. Uh, DPW has been helping us out for years with patches. They also installed a drain uh, last winter. It helped, but it didn't cure the whole problem. Uh, they are going to be able to engineer the project for us to save the city a lot of money in hiring an outside engineering firm. And they calculated all the costs to, to take care of repairing this properly once and for all. So, and those for you who don't know, Station 4 is up on Burnett Road? Correct. Yes. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments about Mayor's Order 6? Thank you. Also, President, uh, Councilor Bob Zigarazzi has now attended the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Mayor's Order 7 is the appropriation of $38,000 to the following named account. Fire special account for vehicle purchase from the available funds in the stabilization for capital budgeting account. As you can see from the background information, we have a fire prevention vehicle that I believe dates back to 2007? 2006. Yeah. Six. The last Crown Victoria in our fleet. That's going to be replaced with, I believe, a Ford Bronco. That, That's correct. That Ford Bronco is available. And uh, we've been very fortunate to 
secure uh, upon approval from the council some of these vehicles that are on the list here and uh, this is one that we're hopeful that will get approved so that we can replace it for fire prevention purposes right uh, so this is a 2006 crown vic as the mayor had stated um al Isaac was able to help us out in locating a ford bronco uh it's not here yet but it's it's on its way into the local area um it's a very good price it's about the same price as a ford escape and it's a little bit roomier for their equipment um, this was a hand-me-down from the police department i don't know how long ago but it's on its last leg it's rotting in the instrument cluster i wanted to bring in the mileage today we can't even get the instrument cluster to function properly so uh it's it's needed thank you any questions about mayor's order seven Comments. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you again, Chief. You're welcome. The mayor's appropriation, uh, I'm sorry, mayor's order eight, is the appropriation of $215,490 to the following named account, forestry special account for the purchase of a chipper from the available funds and the stabilization for capital budgeting account. As you can see from the background specs, I know the superintendent of DPW is here. Uh, we're trying to do more tree service in-house. We have, uh, all the, I'll say, the equipment that the City Council has supported over the years. Um, they believe that with the failure recently of the current chipper, that I think they've gotten it up and running again. This one uh, will make them much more efficient in what they do. And uh, this is the chipper of their choice. I, I have a lot of respect for the tree warden and his team. And I wanted to support him with this purchase because I think they could get more work done if they have the proper tools. Superintendent. So yes, this uh, chipper is um, larger than the chippers that we have uh, currently. Um, the chippers that we have currently have been seeing a lot of use and um, have been, you know, re you know, deteriorating with all the storms, winds. Um, we've been doing a lot of tree removal uh, within the right of way, with at the golf course, in the parks, uh, you know, and by this chipper will enable us to pretty much cut you know, a large section of the tree and feed it right through rather than having to cut it up into smaller pieces, making it more efficient, less cleanup. We also have a very large stockpile of trees that were taken down um, and taken over to DPW with the log truck. And we, you know, we don't have the equipment really to break it down uh, easily. So this chipper will also assist with um, handling what we have currently in our uh, in our yard so that we can uh, dispose of it. A lot of these trees that we have are not desirable because they're um, diseased trees. They're not really good for burning. Uh, so if we can chip it all, we can um, dispose of it at, for no cost versus having to, if we just break the tree down into smaller sections, we pay to get rid of it um, in Westfield. Thank you. Any questions about the chipper? Sure. Mm -hmm. Councilor Liberty. Width size that? This one will be able to handle up to 20 inch diameter. Wow. Thank you. And my understanding is it would seem like we want to save some of the nice pieces of log, but most of the trees that we take down are diseased and damaged. So we do have to chip them and uh, this will be much more efficient. This also so. has a nice feeder, uh, like a conveyor on the front so that you're not having to actually like get really close to the mechanism. So it's much safer apparatus as well. Vice President Zigorowski. Uh, was, uh, will you have enough people to operate this chipper? Yeah, this was, uh, so when we have a crew that goes out and we use a smaller chipper, we have somebody operating the log truck with the boom and they're cutting the tree down. Say they're like removing all the limbs and totem pulling it and then cutting it in sections. We then have other people down kind of breaking it up to make it so that we can put it through the chipper. Um, now it's gonna, uh, allow us to utilize other individuals elsewhere versus having everybody, the whole staff at one location. We can send people out to do stump grinding, you know, um, where this piece of equipment um, will be, we'll be able to feed it right from the log truck. The grapple on the log truck will be able to just feed the, the tree pieces in there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you for your consideration. Just to, I'm going to pause for a second to just want the viewing audience and everyone here and the city councilors to understand that this capital committee uh, reviewed 
request lists and, and prioritize them with the department heads of up to $3.5 million. We've narrowed it down to roughly just about $2 million that the City Council had put aside just for these purposes, which is making sure we stay on top of our equipment as uh, we don't want to purchase things all at once. And what's happening is it's time now to starting to replace, like you'll see Mayor's Order 9. It's the appropriation of $102,925 to the following named account, DPW Park Special Account for the Purchase of Vehicles from the funds in the Stabilization Capital Budgeting Account. That is for a Parks Department F550 dump truck. Uh, that was supposed to be on next year's capital list. That vehicle is now failing. And uh, Liz, anything you want to add that uh, it probably won't pass inspection? I know that Al Rizek was is here as well. And, and uh, anything? So I'll uh, let Al speak to the condition of the vehicles as he is the expert. He sure <laughs> is. So the 550 got moved up the list. Um, Alan, tell us why we moved it up the list. The reason why we moved it up the list is one of their uh, dump trucks, which is currently a 450, um, has a twisted rear end. It had some issues last year during plowing, um, twisted it, so now the truck goes down the uh, street dog-legged so to speak, crabbing down the street, and um, it's just not safe anymore. Any questions about Mayor's Order 9? Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Alan. Mayor's Order 10 is the appropriation of 142000 to the following named account, DPW Park Special Account for the purchase of equipment from the available funds and the stabilization for capital budgeting account. And as you can see from your background and information, we are on number 10. I believe that's for our backhoe. Yep. So we need a backhoe for parks. So, um, oh. Sure, go ahead, Liz. So this backhoe is primarily used in the cemeteries for digging graves. Um, it is also used, though, for loading uh, leaf boxes and other things that we use um, in the parks. Um, the current backhoe has been very difficult to repair and find parts, and I think Al can speak to that. Um, so it's come the time to uh, replace it. Uh, for several months, uh, Parks was using another department's backhoe. Um, so, you know, it's, we can share equipment as much as we can, but I, we obviously have needs uh, that we have to maintain. So I can and, let Al make Yeah, and the backhoe is also over 20 years old, the current one. And again, it's hard to get, just get it operating. And I believe they did a lot of, spent a lot of time researching, making sure they got the right backhoe. I believe it allows for size-wise flexibility to get within graves where it needs to go. And it also can slide, I believe, side to side, which I think is a real benefit in certain tight areas. Oh. That is correct, Mayor. So the, the backhoe that we currently have now, this New Holland, parts are obsolete for it. Many of them on the boom, we actually have to fabricate and weld ourselves because they're just obsolete right now. This new backhoe we're looking at is a, it's a Caterpillar backhoe. Uh, it's all its front implements, that is their buckets, the forks, everything are completely interchangeable with the same machines that we operate both in the water department and in the highway department. The uh, backhoe part for doing the digging, instead of having outriggers that fold out, they literally drop straight down, so it's designed for more of a, uh, a tighter area. Not only that, the actual backhoe will actually side shift left to right 20 inches so that they can get in between stones to dig the graves that they need to, to dig in a tight area. Thank you, any questions or comments about Mayor's Order 10? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 11, it's the appropriation of $66,178.40 to the following named account, DPW Park Special Account for the purchase of a crew cab pickup from the available funds in the Stabilization for Capital Budgeting Account. As you can see from the background information, I know our superintendent is here. We have a Ford F-350 crew cab that uh, I believe, uh, I'm sorry, the pickup truck that's, that we're replacing is a 2009 model and we'll be replacing that with an F-350 crew cab with a plow. Lift gate. Yeah, this, this is like a kind of a Frankenstein truck. So, Al can. So the truck is actually older than that. It's actually a 2005 or 2006. Um, they predominantly use this truck right now to do the field painting and everything. Uh, this truck is kind of hodgepodge together. It's got a black bed on it with, with a yellow body. We kind of took parts from other trucks that we had hanging around to make one to keep it going, but it's, it's time for a new truck right now. So thank you for your consideration. Any questions about Mayor's Order 11? 
Mayor's Order 12 is the appropriation of $66,178.40 to the following named account, flood control special account for the purchase of vehicles from the stabilization for capital budgeting account. As you can see from your background information, it is also an F-350 that has outlived its life. And Liz, this one is for flood control. Yes, um, they've actually been without a crew cab uh, with a plow. Uh, a few years ago, we had to replace their dump truck um, and they had been using, they're borrowing for several years now, a highway truck, but uh, Al can speak to this one as well. Yep, this one again is, I believe is a 2002. Um, it's, it's time for a new truck. It's living on borrow time. Flood control really does need a new pickup truck down there from when they're putting their, uh, their guys together when they're out and, and cutting the, uh, the dikes and, and all the other uh, retention basins that are, that are around town. It's just more economical to put all the guys in the same vehicle versus taking you know, the, the other trucks out there and multiple vehicles and just wasting gas. Thank you. Any comments? Or... Councilor Roy. Now, what do we do with the old trucks? Do we turn them in for scrap or? So the old trucks will get parked in my yard. Um, when we build up enough of an inventory, we will then uh, put those vehicles out to bid. And uh, typically uh, as one giant mass, and then the highest bid, of course, gets them typically as a junkyard because there's really not left to them. But I will sit on them for three years, so to speak, um, where we can utilize parts off of them before we finally sell them off for scrap. Thank you. Any other <laughs> questions or comments? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 13. It's the appropriation of $49,765 to the following named account, DPW Administration Special Account for the purchase of vehicles from the available funds and the stabilization for capital budget, budgeting account. This is a new F-150. Um, the committee in conversations with our superintendent of DPW feel that this would be the best fit for the admin one vehicle that needs to be replaced. Superintendent or Alan, anything you want to add? I can just say um, we requested it be replaced with a, a pickup truck because when we're um, going on around the city, going to project sites and we're putting stuff in the vehicle, uh, sometimes it's things that you don't want to throw in the back of an enclosed vehicle, like uh, an SUV. So it seemed more appropriate to have a truck that can be utilized more appropriately for what we're doing. Yes, and again, this is replacing a 2009 Ford uh, uh, Explorer that started out its life as the highway foreman's uh, vehicle. Then it went to the old deputy or old superintendent, then the new superintendent, and then finally to Liz. Um, the, the truck's got a lot of miles on it. There's, there's extensive rot to it. It's, uh, it's not roadworthy anymore. We've actually just had some brake issues in the last uh, three weeks. Um, it just needs to be replaced. Thank you. Any questions on Mayor's Order 13? President LaFlam. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm glad to see we're getting a pickup truck. I think it's a better for the process of what, what you use it for. But I happen to be on a, uh, looking at a site with, uh, with uh, the, uh, Mr. Boyer, and I, he showed me all the rot underneath of the truck. That, and that's one good, what, what shows, and some people say to me all the time, boy, these tree, some of these trucks look good. Why are we getting rid of them? because they maintain them the best they can, but unfortunately the undercarriage and all that is what rots away in the mileage. So, um, you know, they try to do the best they can, but unfortunately they, they just last so long. So thank you on that one. Thank you, sure. Uh, Councilor Costello, Pinia uh, Costello. Thanks, um, it's commendable that the uh, DPW and the DPW maintenance department has gone so far with these vehicles. I mean, going back to 2009, you got a lot of use out of those vehicles, and it's a great asset to the city because there's no waste here, no waste at all. So uh, your department is run efficiently, and uh, your maintenance department is run very efficiently um, to get use out of these vehicles for so long. Many of us have a 2009 vehicle. I'm sure many of them will... Uh, taxpayers will try to get rid of it, but thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? One quick, thank quick you question. for your cons Oh, Councilor Liberty. No, no plow on that 150? No. You wouldn't put one on a 150 anyway. 
Thank you. If I could just one, one more comment. Uh, the fire department's backhoe, this Ford F-150 that we're talking about, um, those vehicles are both right now being held for us at Marcotte. Um, so hopefully we can act on them tonight versus putting them into a committee because uh, they may not want to hold them for us and then we'll have to start that process all over again. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to say, um, Central Maintenance does do an exceptional job in maintaining all of the city's vehicles and vehicles, uh, which is why we get so much of the life out of them like we do. Well said. I commend uh, Central Maintenance Garage and Allen's team Thank for you. what they do as well. Really good. Thank you. We'll move on to grants. Mayor's Order 14. Order that the City Council accept the Planning Department grant in the amount of $116,600 from the U.S. Department of Energy and Energy Efficiency in the Conservation Block Grant Formula Program. Funding from this grant will be utilized to reduce the cost of much needed updates of the severely outdated and inefficient lighting in the City Hall building. Said grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Any questions or comments? I'm not sure if City Planner Lee Pouillot is joining us. No, he's not on. It's pretty self-explanatory. We're very fortunate to land this grant, which will help with lighting upgrades in Phase 2 of City Hall as we get closer and closer towards phase two. Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's order 15, order that the city council accept the planning department technical assistance grant through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Broadband, Broadband Institute, MBI, Municipal Digital Equity Planning Program. The city of Chicopee's project has a value of $105,000 and the MBI will provide funds directly to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on the city's behalf. Said grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A and 53A and a half. So if you look at your background information, you'll see that uh, the MBI Digital Equity uh, Program, we, this is going to be the city of Chicopee's proportionate share to make sure and uh, that uh, uh, you know, COVID-19 has showed us something that there's been a demand and, and shortcomings when it comes to digital accessibility, especially in areas of underserved populations. So this plan will help to identify and work that bridge in those gaps in digital equity and ensure the well-being and equitable service to all stakeholders in the city. Any questions about the grant? Thank you for your consideration. Next order is Mayor's Order 16. That's order that the City Council accept the Planning Department Municipal, Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness 2.0 pilot grant in the amount of $95,000 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. Funding from this grant will accommodate an updated in-depth assessment of vulnerabilities and pertinent response, responses to climate change scenarios that will be strategically implemented. Said grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Any questions about the Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs Municipality and Vulnerability Preparedness 2.0 Pilot Grant Program? Yeah, Councilor Lopez. What are we actually using this for? This. Uh, this is actually going to be used, and if you see in the background information, we'll accommodate an updated in-depth assessment of the vulnerabilities and the pertinent responses to climate change scenarios. Um, we've applied for this grant through planning, and we're going to go through the pilot, and we'll look at reassessing and addressing the vulnerable assets, produce a viability demonstration. It's going to be a study. The, str the strategies that will be uh, use. We'll be looking at zoning reform, looking at a citywide master, the master plan, uh, site plan regulations, and open space recreational planning. Would we have been doing this without the grant anyways? We've actually already started with our comprehensive plan that we're working on uh, accepting its final, final phase, so yes. But so these are things that we... As a, this, this is a study that's an add-on to the comprehensive plan, is that what you're saying? I don't believe this is an add-on. The comprehensive plan stands on its own. That's just one of the things you can use the grant for. 
So what we're choosing to use the grant for is a study, is what you're saying? It, I believe it will be a study, yes. And this is a study that will be done so that we can just see where we stand. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 17 is an appropriation of Yes, Mayor's Order 17 is the appropriation of $95,000 to the following named account, Planning Department Special Account for a Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program from the available funds in the stabilization account. So we accept the grant and then we have to fund the grant. If I may, uh, Councilor Dobaz has now arrived for the meeting. And then we get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any questions about Mayor's Order 16 and 17? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 18, order that the City Council accept the fiscal year 22 FEMA assistance to firefighters grant to the Chicopee Fire Department in the amount of $40,997.27. Said grant will be used to purchase personal protective equipment, including turnout gear helmets and SCBA equipment and is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. I know that Chief Stamborski is here and I don't think the timing could be any better for this grant. Chief, you want to explain? Uh, yes, uh, so this is a FEMA grant we applied for about 18 months ago. Uh, they were a little bit late in funding it, but um, it's outstanding timing because we just hired nine new firefighters, so this should equip all nine of them with the necessary equipment. I think any questions about Mayor's Order 18? Mayor's Order 19 is the appropriation of it. Mayor's appropriation of 40977 to the following named account, fire special account for the purchase of equipment from the available funds in the stabilization fund. You spend the money and you get reimbursed through the grant. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Any questions about Mayor's Order 19? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 20 is the appropriation of $10,200 to the following named account, police special account for the purchase of bulletproof vests from the available funds in the stabilization fund. As you can see from your background information, we have new cadets that are graduating from academy. Chief, uh, this will pay for their vests. Correct. Um, the, one of the best parts about the program is uh, the city fronts the money and then we seek reimbursement through uh, the federal and state government. I believe the state government, however, is a competitive grant but as of right now, I don't think we've ever not received funding from them. So we should get reimbursed 100% for these. Thank you. Any questions about Mayor's Order 20? They're a little out of order. It should be a 20 and 22 because 22 is actually uh, the grant. Councilor Lopez. Thank you. Um, Chief, I, I know I asked this before, but I want to make sure that it's the same process for this one, and I want to follow up on it. The last time you asked for bulletproof vests, we asked what happened with the other half, because you're asking for the full amount, and then they will reimburse you half. Does that half go in, back into the police account, or does it go back into the general fund? That goes back into the general fund. So for the last batch, the other half was already went back into the general fund, correct? Yes. Thank you. Councilor Roy. Yes, Chief. Are we using plates, or are we using Kevlar? It, it's both, sir. The uh, majority of the vest is a, a Kevlar, and then there is a ceramic plate that covers the, the vital organs area. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments about Mayor's Order 20? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 21 <coughs> is the appropriation of $6,000 to the following named account, health expense account for special services from the available funds in the stabilization fund. I know that our, our health director is here and this money is used for sheriff fees, for special services, for deliveries. Uh, Lisa, anything you wanna add? This, um, this money is so that we can, when we have landlord tenant issues, it's to make sure that we serve the landlord so that we fare better in housing court. Thank and it's $25 you. per delivery. Thank you. Any questions about Mayor's Order 21? Thank you, Lisa, and thank you for your consideration. Mayor's 
Order 22 is the grant part of the bulletproof vest. This is order that the City Council accept the bulletproof vest reimbursement grant in the amount of $10,800 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Office of Grants and Research to the Chicopee Police Department. Said grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Any questions about the grant? Pretty self-explanatory. Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 23, order that the City Council accept the attached name of donations in the amount of $3,500 for the National Night Out event. Said donations are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. We're looking at number 23. And uh, if you'd like, I, I'd prefer to quickly read through this list of don donors. Without them, National Night Out can't be as special as it, as it was this year. Florence Bank, $500. Hoyle Medical Center, $500. Mary Beth Piniak Costello, $50. McKen Street Farms, $500. Mercedes Benz of Springfield, $100. Our Father's House, $250. People's Bank, $500. Uh, River Valley Counseling, $100. Westfield Bank, $500. Dunkin' Donuts, $500. Thank you for your consideration accepting those donations. Mayor's Order 24, order that the City Council accept the attached in-kind donations with a value of $816 to the National Night Out event. Said donations are accepted in, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. If you look at your background information, uh, this was for T-shirts, I believe, that many of the volunteers were wearing and that uh, in-kind donation came from IQ Inc. and also BJ's uh, estimated value of about $200 for donated water and T-shirts were estimated again from IQ Inc. at about $616. Thank you for your consideration and acceptance of those donations. Mayor's Order 25, be it ordered that the City Council I'm sorry, be it ordered that the City of Chicopee Golf Commission that you hereby authorize to prepare and release a request for proposal for five years of maintenance for the city golf course. And Chicopee is hereby authorized to enter into said five-year maintenance contract with a successful proponent. Uh, it's no secret that our golf course is in excellent shape. Uh, we need to go out to bid uh, for the next five years for that contract. This would authorize it or allow us to continue with private maintenance that's been so, success, so successful. I know, are there any members of the Golf Commission here? Anyone joining us remotely? Yeah, I'm here, uh, Mayor Mike O'Neill. Our, our Golf Director Mike O'Neill is here. If you have any questions, Councilor Balakir has a question. Yeah, thank you. Do we have an idea what the projected cost, what the expected contract might be with this, or is it still going out to bid? Then we'll have some further discussion. Yeah, it, it, it's something that is going to have to go out to bid. Um, I know the cost of, with the cost of materials and everything going up since COVID, uh, it, it'll be higher than the last contract that was out, but I'd hate to give any speculation on what it could be. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions about Mayor's Order 25? And thank you, Mike, for being on the call, and thank you for your consideration. Next order, Mayor's Order 26, to the City Council, you're hereby notified that I have this day appointed Steve Zahowski of 23 Caddyshack Drive as the Chief Human Resource Officer to serve in such office for the term of three years, beginning on July 1st, 2023, to which appointment I ask the confirmation of your Honorable Council. It's, you know that Steve Zahowski has been serving in, in the acting capacity as our Chief Human, Res Human Resource Officer and uh, frankly, I think he's doing a great job. He's building a team, he's building up morale. He's working on some of the things that we need to work on. And one of those is, is uh, creating structure for employee development and training. And Steve is here if you have any questions and I'm excited for the next three years for Steve as our HR director. I'm gonna apologize, Mayor. We're gonna to have to uh, have a recess of your mayor, your marriage briefing because we had 7.15, we have to open the city council meeting. So I'll take a motion to... Motion to uh, recess. 
the mayor's briefing. The mayor's uh, Motion briefing. Motion made and second to recess the mayor's briefing. Roll call, please. Denise, could we get a roll call, please? Representative Lamp? Yes. Roy? Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Yeah. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Lopez? Yes. Balapier? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dobos? Yes. Cushane? Yes. The Brewery? Yes. Kenya Costello? Yes. Yes or no? no. Motion to recess. And that approved. Okay. I'd like to call, okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order the September 5th, 2020 City Council meeting to order. Uh, please li rise for the pledge to the flag. Thank you. And now I'm going to ask for a roll call uh, for the meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. A moment of silence for those who have served us home and abroad. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll take a motion if we like to return to the mayor's briefing to continue the mayor's briefing. Could you take a roll call? Yeah, motion to return to the regular roll. You can call the roll to start the council meeting. Let's call the roll. You didn't do a roll call. Oh, we didn't. We said we yeah. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, Frank, we, can we, we get to call a the roll to open the council meeting? Yeah, yeah. And you can okay, okay, that and then head back to the mayor's briefing. Got it. Let's have the roll call for this meeting. <clears throat> okay, President LaFlam. Yes, thank you, Keith. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yeah. Zigorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyrie. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobas. Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny Costello? Yes. Penny Costello? Yes. 13 yes, President. Thank you. Um, now I'll take a motion to return to Motion the to recess the City Council meeting. Motion made and second to recess the City Council meeting. Roll call, please. <clears throat> President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Yeah. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Motion to return to the mayor briefing. Motion made and second to return to the mayor's briefing. Roll call. Denise, you want to handle that roll? President LaFlant? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zygorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Alec Yes. 
Krampitz? Yes. Dobos? Yes. Fishing? Yes. Liberty? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. <clears throat> 13, yes. And the motion passes. The mayor, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, President Laflamme. I have two very important appointments and a few donations that uh, we need to get through. As, as we went to recess, I was letting you know that I had this day appointed Steve Zahowski as our HR direct, our chief human resource officer. He is here for a, a three-year contract. And, uh, I don't know if there are any questions or comments about that, but Mayor's Order 27, be it order that the City Council hereby approve the employment agreement between the City of Chicopee and the Chief Human Resource Officer Stephen Zahowski, which is attached to the order as Exhibit A. <clears throat> any questions about the contract? Sure, Councilor Lopez. Thank you. Um, I'm looking over the job description, and although the resume wasn't included this time, we did receive it prior to, so I was able to refer to it. And it says that it is required for the person to have a master's degree. Um, and then Steven Sajowski does not have a master's degree. Um, so that raises some questions as to how they were even appointed slash hired um, despite not meeting the education that was posted as required. And then it's also, I've also asked for our city auditor to provide, because we have two appointments today, so I asked for both of them to do my due diligence. Um, I asked for the previous contracts. And so the previous contract for our former CHRO was a master's level CHRO and was getting paid significantly less than this CHRO that you're asking for appointment that is only a bachelor's level. Can you explain the reason why? Uh, that, that's exactly the same salary that Mr. our former CHRO was receiving. Um, I, we, from the documents that we received from Sharon Riley today, um, the, form, the former contract is, was not the same salary. Uh, the only difference that I could see is potentially the stipend that was given for ADA coordinator to Mr. to our former CHRO. Uh, that's the only difference. Uh, we've actually that would have been what the CHRO would have been making on July 1st. That's what's in the new contract that's in front of you. So was that stipend not in the former contract? Because the contract that we received did not include that stipend. Was it, it was an add-on uh, after his first year the former CHRO, correct? Okay, but it was the not added onto the contract formally. Is that, is that the it was reason? A member stand, it's my understanding it's a memorandum of agreement between the former CHRO and the city of Chicopee, correct, to take on the duties and responsibilities of ADA coordinator. Okay, well, the contract itself does not include that. And even if so, let's say it is the same salary. Let's, let's, I'll it take is. that at face value from you. Um, why are we compensating a bachelor's level CHRO the same way we would compensate a master's level when they don't even meet the requirements of what was posted? I will say that I believe that Steve has the abilities to run the HR department. He has the experience, and he was the best candidate that applied for the job, and I was proud to hire him. Were That's there master's the levels? that also apply for the position? The position was posted at 101, and it received a 2% salary increase on July 1st. That wasn't my question, Mr. Mayor. So was, the were there was, applicants that were master's level was my question. I'd have to go back and look at the list of applicants. If there were applicants that were master's level, then we would be comparing this to a master's level applicant. Therefore, a bachelor's level applicant would not be getting paid the same as a master's level applicant so we do need to know that information your point if you're is, asking is for us. Your well understood. Stephen Zahowski was unanimously chosen by the selection panel to be our next HR director. And that's my answer, Ms. Lopez. Yeah, well, I will say that I will be voting no on this today. Um, I do not agree with us paying a bachelor's level CHRO the same that we would be paying a master's level. You've not given me reason to believe that we did not have master's level applicants. On the contrary, you've not been able to answer that for me. Um, so unfortunately, I, I'm going to be voting no on this. Thank you. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you for everyone else's consideration. Is, is there anybody here that was on the committee that can verify Can you that? talk into your mic, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anybody in the audience that can verify whether or not a person with a master's degree was part of the application pool? I see yes, a hand uh, up. Yes, Liz is here, and Liz was on the panel. Uh, I can say that uh, we're very fortunate to have Stephen. Like I had said before, it was a unanimous decision by the panel. I don't take these types of hires very lightly, 
Uh, Liz? Uh, yes, we did interview three applicants. Uh, none of them had a master's degree. Uh, just in my experience, especially when looking for talented staff, we do look at not just the education level, but we also look at the uh, years of experience and um, what type of uh, you know work that they have been involved in. Uh, Steve and Mr. Jachowski uh, interviewed really well. He's very knowledgeable, and although he didn't have a master's degree, we felt confident as a committee that he could successfully do the job. Thank you. Council Lopez. Thank you, Liz. Um, I appreciate your commentary and, your, and giving us some information about some of the other applicants. What I will say is I, I do have some human resources experience, and when you put out a job description and you make it a requirement for someone to have a master's degree, that makes a lot of people who may not have master's degree self-select out of it. So we would have perhaps had other applicants who didn't have a master's degree who would have applied for this. And again, we are comparing this salary to the salary of the former CHRO who had a master's degree. Um, so although I appreciate your concern and you're letting us know that we didn't have uh, an applicant who had a master's degree, we're still comparing it to the salary of someone who did. I can actually give you a little bit of background of, on the former CHRO. He actually didn't achieve the master's degree prior to taking that position. He achieved the master's degree while he was in position. Um, also, uh, back last fall, um, I believe there was an issue with needing an ADA compliance officer, and Correct. that's when the title was modified to C because formerly it was HR director. The title was modified to CHRO um, with the addition of a $10,000 stipend for ADA compliance, and I'm guessing that maybe the city auditor didn't give you the MOA, but in, I'm aware that in Mr. Zuhowski's uh, current contract, he is also taking on the role of ADA compliance officer, which is why it brings him up to the same salary as the former CHR. And so that, begs, that brings up another question, though, then, which is if we did not give the prior director the CHRO title and so he got a master's degree, then why no, are we offering? That's not what, no, he got the okay, increase. Uh, I'm sorry. It's my briefing. We're not going to have hearsay oh, back okay. and forth, and yeah. I'm, I, we're not going to continue to do this. What I will say is that the former CHRO started off as a generalist in our department, and he earned his way all the way up to assistant director and then also human resource director and CHRO. I'm very proud of, proud of his accomplishments. It was a pleasure to work with him. We've moved on from that in front of you today. You have a contract and you have an appointment. It's your choice whether you want to approve that contract or if you want to approve that appointment. It's also my duty as a counselor to ask questions, and so my questions are valid, and you don't get to just shut them down because you don't want to answer them. I'm not going to have here say becomes, going back and so forth, then the question is to you. Lopez. So then the question goes to you. The question is then, was the former HR director given the CHRO title only after he got his master's degree? The CHR, I don't know, and if we'd like, I can get you the information and proudly share it with you. I don't have that information, was not prepared to answer questions about the former CHRO tonight, but I'll get it for you if you'd like, and I'll have it for you tomorrow. Thank you. Any other questions about the CHRO appointment? I have a comment, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I just want to say that this, this is a ridiculous exercise in political grandstanding going on in the, these chambers right now. Um, I would ask that our colleagues who happen to be running for mayor leave their mayoral campaign at the door. This is a highly qualified candidate. It's not the responsibility of this council to question their qualifications after they were unanimously approved by a hiring committee. Quite frankly, the resume is exquisite, and he's done an excellent job so far. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 29. If I may, actually. I'm, I'm sorry, Mayor's Order 29. If I may, order, actually, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mayor's Ms. Order 29. If be I order may, that Mr. Mayor. Be in order that the City Council approve the five-year contract beginning July 1st, 2023 to suspend the mayoral through briefing. June 30th, 2028. Motion to suspend the mayoral briefing. For the briefing. Superintendent of Public Works and authorize the Council President to sign the contract. Motion to suspend mayor, the mayoral briefing. Let her finish one more time, please. This is our briefing. This is our briefing. It's in violation of our rules. She's it done is. multiple times. Please so move on to the next order. We, no. Uh, no. I'm going to cancel it. It's done. Let's get on Thank to the you. next one. I'll make that decision. Moving on to Mayor's Order 29. 
Be it in order that the City Council approve the five-year contract beginning July 1st of 2023 through June 30th of 2028 for the Superintendent of Public Works and authorize the Council President to sign the contract. As you can see from your background information, uh, our Superintendent of DPW has actually uh, been willing to stay with us for an extra five years and wanted to have some job security. It's really hard right now to get a PE and especially one at Liz's Caliper, who is certainly an asset to our city and to our departments. And uh, I'm very excited about this new contract. I know that Liz is here in the audience. I know that you've been all working with her for many years. She started off as our city engineer and has now uh, served us for over four years as our superintendent of DPW. And I'm hopeful that you are going to authorize the city council to sign that contract. Sure, Mary Beth, um, Councillor The uh, superintendent of DPW has done an outstanding job and we're very fortunate that she's able to stay because a lot of cities and towns have lost their DPW superintendents and we have a talented one who gets the job done with infrastructure, water, parks. So the city of Westfield recently um, was talking about a DPW superintendent and in the newspaper article, it said over nine years, yes. they've gone through six. Yeah. So we're very fortunate that Superintendent Batista has made a commitment to take her talent and to stay here for another five years. Thank you. So just a, a point of information, 28 and 29 go together. 28 is the actual appointment of Elizabeth Batista as the DPW superintendent to serve in such office for five years, starting on July 1st. So. That's the appointment, and below would be the contract. Councillor, uh, uh, President Laflamme. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, too, just want to thank uh, Liz for a great job. Her, her whole team does. Um, we did receive uh, uh, several other cities' uh, salaries and what their duties are uh, required uh, for those position. And uh, some cities smaller and towns smaller than us have uh, make more than that. There is some that make the same amount. But to me, it's the, the workmanship that she brings to the city council for most of all of us. When we need things done, she's out there to get it done with, with her team. Um, and I appreciate that because, in my opinion, uh, the DBW is very vital to the residents of the city who we deal with that day to the city council deals with day and day and day in day out with issues regarding potholes or whatever and her and her, her and her team get out there and do a great job and all the uh, department heads that serve underneath her her reign so I'm, I'm willing to uh, s sign this contract uh, for her, and I, I do believe that um, we should do it soon and not put this out to send it to uh, finance or anywhere because of the fact that uh, there's other place people that are looking for her too that I know of. So I hope we do uh, approve this this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, Councillor Corshane? I just have a couple of questions or concern. So in March of 18, March 18th of this year. Could you talk into your mic? I can't hear you. Uh, uh, the position received the $2,000 raise, which obviously is appropriate for sure. Uh, and then, but now in July, you're going to get a $12,000 raise. So that's $14,000 raise in a matter of a few months. Uh, we have many city employees whose raises didn't even cover the cost of the insurance increase. But then we're going to give, and this is not a reflection of uh, Superintendent Batista. It's about the position because um, I'm not going to, you know, she's worth every penny, but it's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of employees when a department head is going to get a $14,000 raise in a matter of four months, um, but yet they can't put food on the table and pay their bills. Um, so how do we justify, you know, such a drastic increase from the last contract to the new contract, especially in that short period of time? So that's a great question. We did a pay parity study, Bill, and if you look at the information that we left on your desk, that you'll see that a lot of superintendents are making a lot more money. Uh, Liz is a civil engineer, a PE, and we want to retain that talent for the next five years. It's no secret that our engineering department is down to two employees, two engineers, I mean, uh, three employees, Liz. Three employees and two engineers. We've lost engineers to the state. The state just did pay parity, and you'll look at their civil engineers at MassDOT, and they gave them substantial raises 
over the last year because there's a huge demand for engineers mm -hmm. and there aren't many out there that are they're, they're not coming out of college like they used to and there's a lot of design work that needs to be done and uh, frankly I want to make sure that the city of Chicopee has a superintendent who's qualified who loves Chicopee and he's dedicated to making sure that our roads are clear in the winter our potholes are filled our projects are being done and supervises the many departments that she does so that's the reason why I want to retain that talent bill. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments or questions about Superintendent Batista, her appointment and her contract? <clears throat> Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 30, I'll defer to City Council President Frank LaFlam. And I believe 31 is also City Council President Frank LaFlam. So that completes uh, my share of the of the mayor's briefing. Thank you for your consideration. Have a great meeting. Thank you. Order that the city council accept the grant of the, to the Chicopee Council on Aging the amount of $18,000 from the city of Chicopee's community development block grant. Said grant will be used for an exercise program for seniors and it is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Any questions on that? Seeing none. Mayor's Order 31, order that the City Council accept a donation in the amount of $5,896.50 to the Chicopee Council on Aging for senior meals for the month of July 2023. Said donations are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Is there any questions on this? Self-explanatory. Okay. Okay, now we'll... we'll we're, the mayor, you all set? No comments, mayor? You all set? Okay. okay. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the mayor's briefing. Motion to adjourn the mayor's briefing. Motion made and second to adjourn the mayor's briefing. Roll call, please. Denise? Denise, could we have a roll call on the adjournment of the mayor's briefing? Can Keith do it? Keith, I'll take you? it. It should be on her roll call sheet. I don't know why. Maybe she's muted out or something. But I'll take it for now, and she can just transfer it to her Good. roll call sheet. Thank you, sir. So on, on the motion to, technical difficulties. Okay. On the, on the motion to adjourn the mayor's briefing, President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Govis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. In a motion passes. I'll take a motion to return to the city council meeting. Motion to return to the city council meeting or regular order of business. Motion made and second to return to the city council meeting. Roll call, please. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McCulloch. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finney and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. Thank you. Participating tonight on Zoom for the City Council, maybe we have Councilor uh, Joel McAuliffe, Councilor Jim Tillotson, and I believe that's it for city council. Any other city council? No, those are the only two that are not here. So that being said, uh, President Flame, can I make a motion for a five minute recess? Motion made and second for a five minute recess. Roll call. President Flame. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Sure. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. 
Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We'll take a five minute recess.
long agenda. We have 99 items to get through tonight. I'm going to call the uh, City Council meeting for September 5th back to order. Um, I'm going to ask the City Clerk to please call it a, a roll call. President LaFlam? Here. Roy? Here. Tillotson? Here. Zagorowski? Here. McAuliffe? Here. Brooks? Brooks? Shane, you on Zoom now? Not yet. Here. There he goes. Thank Lopez. you. Lopez. Here. Valkir. Here. Krampitz. Here. Dovis. Here. Kushane. Yes. Here. Labrie. Here. Penny Costello. Here. <clears throat> Thirteen present. Thank you. In compliance with the open meeting law, the city of Chicopee is broadcasting live. Oh, excuse me. Before I do that, I'm going to announce who's on Zoom uh, participating from the city council. We have Joe McAuliffe. Uh, Shane Brook is now on Zoom and Councilor Tillotson. And we have our city clerk, Keith Rattel, on Zoom. In compliance with the open meeting law, the city is broadcasting live and for future broadcast this meeting on, on Chicopee TV. Is anyone else in the audience? audio or videotaping this meeting? If so, please give your name and reason for doing so. Is there anyone on Zoom that's audio or taping this meeting on Zoom? Seeing none, we will move into public input. Public input is limited to three minutes or less. Is anyone here for public input? State your name and, read and your address for the record. And there's a clock up here. I'm gonna go with the three. You don't need to raise your hand. First one up to the mic, then the second, then the third. This, you're welcome to come up and there'll be three minutes. Thank you. Okay, I'll be fast. I'm not a Karen. Um, my name is Julie LaRue. I'm a um, resident of 58 Carew Street, Chicopee, Massachusetts. I Can live you, right across from the current food bank. Could you turn the mic a little bit toward your, your, you've got a soft voice there, which is a little okay, hard. Okay, I'm Thank you. Julie LaRue, 58 Carew Street, Chicopee, Massachusetts. I'm representing um, my neighborhood. Um, we have some big concerns about the current food bank. You were they were given a temporary occupancy till the end of September. They failed to complete parts of what there was responsibility. One of them is that they were supposed to have a 10-foot stockade fence around the area that was going to house the trucks. It is not up. There is no fence. There is no barrier of that fence to the noise that is coming in. The second thing is that they were supposed to have covers on the lights so we wouldn't have a glare. I have a couple of pictures I'd like to show the council as I pass them around afterwards. You can see that there's clearly not ability for us to sleep if we have our windows open. It's like being in the middle of the airport with the lights on. The third thing is that there are supposed to be two entr their entrances on Carew Street. Only one is supposed to be used for vehicles going through. The other one is supposed to be an emergency exit. It is directly across from my house on 58 Carew Street. It's not designated where they're supposed to be. And on top of it, over the last week, it has clearly been an evidence that they are violating what they are supposed to do. I have a picture right now on my phone of a tandem truck that went through that emergency entrance today. There were two other trucks that went through that entrance while they were there. What is happening is that the food bank has not been a good neighbor. We as a community have tried to communicate with Andrew Morehouse. We have gone to the, the routine process. We have been with community meetings. I've talked to Mike Peets. I've talked to the mayor. As a collective group, we've made comments that we want this meeting. And we are concerned that at this point in time, if they continue violating what they're doing right now and not honoring what was part of the planning that they were supposed to do, we will be in a situation where they will get another occupancy extension and not abide by what they're supposed to do. It's a violation to the residents around them and it's not fair. 
thank you. I'd if, like to show, if, I would like to take two minutes to show you something. If you, excuse I, me, uh, ma'am, if you can get a copy to our office, we'll make sure everybody gets a copy of it. If you don't know how to do it, you can stop by the city council office and we'll get a copy for all, all the members here to get a hard copy. With all of the councilors, I've been a member of this community for years. Thank, My family thank has you. been for a hundred years. Thank you, and we'll take your concerns. But if you could just, if you, our office is downstairs as you come in on the left. We will get one to every city council. They'll have the pictures to look at, which is actually better for them to discuss with uh, with with uh, each other. Okay, thank you. Next. Hi. My name is Diane Martin. I live at 851 Prospect Street. I have been living in Ward 9 for over 40 years, 10 years where I am now. I'm here on behalf of the abutters that are against the proposal, the proposal zone change from Residential A to Business A at 523 James Street. We all got together and totally agree that it will ruin the quality of our life. We will have so much more traffic. And if anybody would take the time, the planning board or any of the aldermen, to either come to my home or come and look at how tight this is gonna be, it's gonna be in our backyards. Literally the drive-through, when they showed us the plans, the lines of their business were going over my fence into my yard. They changed it since then. It's very, I'm speaking from my heart, not from this anymore, but to have a drive-through is a lot more intrusive, a drive-up, and to have the speaker directly, my, my fence is here, the speaker will be here, and all I'll hear from 5.30 in the morning till nine o'clock at night is, can I take your order for Starbucks? I've been to Starbucks, the lines are so long that people wait more than five minutes. Their cars are idling. We have babies next door, we have elderly. We have many grandchildren walking the streets in the backyards that are gonna be breathing all these fumes. It's just, there's a private nuisance law and I think that law would be in effect with this. It's from my, these people are so upset, every single abutter, I have every one of them, and they are all so upset about this. And even I went down, because I lived at Dorothy Avenue, the people on that street, the people on Manning Street, the people on Dorothy Avenue, they're all, in Lukasik Street, they're all saying the same thing. They feel that there's gonna be more traffic, people will be speeding on our streets to go because of the way Memorial Drive is a one way. They're gonna be going on our streets to go around and try to get into the drive-through. It will be a terrible thing for the residents. I know it's a money-making thing, but it's a very expensive thing to do to the residents who have been there for so many years. When we bought the land, we were told it was residential in our backyard. One little piece was a fortune teller, and that was business. We, were ne we never thought we would ever have to face this being changed to business. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Beverly Bellavance, 41 Barbie Avenue, Ward 9. I have only one quick concern for the James Street property which Diane spoke about, which is for sale and where Starbucks is considering purchasing from the Fanti family. My concern tonight is to refresh the memory of each counselor here of from two years ago where David Fanti, who is the son of, of the elder Mr. Fanti who has passed, he is the owner of the land and he gave to Counselor of Ward 1, Mr. McAuliffe, a sum of $1,000. This was noted here in the city clerk's office. We saw the paperwork. How does Ward 1 get involved with Mr. Fanti in Ward 9, my ward? Therefore, 
to be fair and equitable, I ask the council to recuse Mr. McAuliffe from voting on the issue of rezoning. There is a definite conflict of interest here. Please make the most ethical decision for the residents of Ward 9. Mr. McAuliffe needs to abstain from voting on the rezoning. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public input? Don Lamoth, 164 Meadow Street. I'm here about item 59 on your agenda, which is 520 Chickabee Street. Um, I read in the paper that they want to make a mixed use on a 50 by 60 foot lot, and they want to make a business in two apartments. I've heard that we need apartments, but on a 50 by 60 foot lot, there will be no parking or very little parking. With a business, there will definitely be no parking, so Chickabee Street will end up taking the brunt of that. We have had fatalities on Chickabee Street. I don't think adding more parking to Chickabee Street is a very good idea. And just as a point of information, we've, we as school department tried to build on a, on a bigger lot and we were told we couldn't do it. So, you know, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna allow something to be built there, maybe take the business part out and just make it to apartments and make sure they have parking. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Gallant, 50, 65 Fifth Avenue. I have the Maple Avenue petition, which I talked to you about last month. Should be on your doorstep now. Most of the 240 signatures on the petition are from the immediate area, including uh, Pat Welch, a former Chicopee mayor. Uh, you have to pay close attention to the map that's included. It's part of a larger map produced around 1912 by the horse and buggy people that designed Fairview Park. Uh, they knew about Murphy's Law and they governed themselves accordingly. You won't find that continued. <laughs> Most of Fairview Park was built in the 50s and 60s. Uh, today, the heart of Fairview Park has 50 houses with an average of two cars and people per house. So what would happen if a major emergency occurred tomorrow and forced the residents of Fairview Park to flee? Where would they go? If you look at the map, you'll see the residents and the emergency vehicles will all be going to the northern access road Whittlesea Avenue. Why? Well, look at the map. Moving mm -hmm. south, you'll come to the central access road, Hoyoke Avenue, but it's not connected. The contractors did the easy stuff and walked away from the less profitable stuff. Moving further south, you'll find a large gully with an economic feasibility problem. On the other side of the gully is the southern access road, Maple Avenue which is on the petition. It was partially built in 1940 and has been used on a daily basis for the past 83 years to access two houses. After the fact, the incident, survivors will figure out that they can cross that gully with a bridge or fill and connect to Maple Avenue, but it may not be available. 112 years after becoming a paper street, Maple Avenue has no designation. It's basically just land. And that's a lot like money in the general fund. Should some other purpose or use come along in the meantime that generates tax revenue, that petition could fly through the mayor's office and the city council with no consideration being given to the, what's on the other side of that gully. The Maple Avenue petition makes Maple Avenue a city street, and that gives it a designation. You know, if you have a better idea and do it this way, well, go for it. If not, you should back this petition because doing nothing is really a bad idea. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public input? Good evening, councilmen and women, people at home. It occurs to me I may be branded as a squeaky wheel. Okay, when I get that grease, I'm going to use it to grease the wheels of government. Could you just give your name and address, please? Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Deborah Sutherland, 129 Ledlow Road. Thank you. Ward 9. Thank you. That was a great joke, though, right? Da -dum -dum. Okay. The Ledlow Road pollution plight persists. One, dangerous dust pollution threatens our respiratory health. Two, 
copious, offensive, polluting fumes keep our windows shut tight. Three, metal banging and scraping, thunderous, heavy machinery noise bullies our neighborhood, pollutes our environment. This is the environmental injustice we suffer. Here's our possible, hopeful, attainable solutions. One, no further cutting down of trees or excavating of land that now serves as a precious buffer to the pollution for the 500 or so feet of Ledlow Road where industrial zoning slaps up against residential zoning. Two, the mountain. Huh, the mountain of loose, excavated sand, dirt, and grit that is many stories high and not contained or covered. Please take that down to a level that can be controlled by a barrier to reduce the unhealthy, ever-present dust pollution. That Marion, X3, that Marion Excavating is a company with ethics and standards that equal a good neighbor. One respectful of the regulated times of operation, no more starting work very, very early in the morning or on Sunday. Keep the dirty, dusty, smelly, and noisy operation under control. The Ledlow Road crew believes our government will do what is right for the residents and the environment of Chicopee. I have 53 seconds, I'm gonna do a quick PSA announcement. Chicopee Cultural Council grant cycle is now open for applications. The deadline for applications is October 17th. It's a very intuitive, easy grant application. This is public funding available to you. If you want to create, perform, or share your special talent in the arts, humanities, and sciences with Chicopee, please apply for a grant. Interested? Please go to the Chicopee Cultural Council website. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public input? Lisa Bienvenu, 34 Everett Street. Um, it, it's been an interesting meeting this evening so far, um, but I find the public input the most interesting. There's a lot of people here, and there's a lot of different issues that have been brought up. But it has the same theme about planning, about how we plan to do developments, how we plan roads, how we plan with drive-throughs, how this is impacting the community. I'm thrilled to see that finally some changes are occurring on Chicopee Street. Um, Councilor Corshane has been advocating for this for years, years and years and years and years. And even after five pedestrian fatalities in the city of Chicopee, that still did not occur quickly, which concerns me because the 30-minute parking signs on Front Street went up pretty darn quickly. I don't know if anybody noticed them there tonight, but this, the lines are, are painted um, for parking spots on Front Street on the City Hall side, and the 30-minute parking signs are up, so I parked in a visitor spot because I, with 99 items on this agenda, I'm going to be here a lot longer than a half an hour. It was a lot longer than a half an hour to even get to public input. And I did confirm with the chief of police that when he was here, um, does this mean that parking tickets are gonna start going out? And so I hope people do realize on Front Street, where the 30 minute parking sign is now, that there will be parking tickets going out. So if that can be done so quickly, why can't things about the safety of our streets, like what's now happening on Chigabee Street, or having a complete streets plan, which I know DPW and planning are working on this now, but I did confirm that we're still only a tier one community with no approved plan by the state, um, per the state guideline, so, Again, that's not something that was a priority. I hope that the planning department is applying from, for funds for the uh, safe routes to school because that's currently open for grants um, 
having to do with kids walking to school. And I know uh, Mr. Lamoth from the school committee is here this evening, so I hope he brings that up tomorrow. And also there's a competition, um, which would be great for the two high schools to get involved with. So I, I just hope we, we think about that stuff also. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public input? Thank you. Sue Nimchik, uh, James Street. It is a very interesting meeting tonight. And I think what really is beneficial, whether we recognize it or not, is the fact that residents are here, Chickabee Street, and rightly so to bring your concerns of not enough parking, so why not address it and keep it as residential? Um, Diane, I knew your husband from years ago. What a stellar fella, okay. Always understood what was happening and always signed. Not because of a favor or anything, but it was the right thing to do, okay. All the others as well, coming to input about concerns to be your eyes and ears so you can know. Was very happy also to see discussion with members of the council on my first time here after yours, because of a lot of things were happening at home and requirements and everything, I came across Derek. And he reminded me of Jim Tillotson in 2015, who championed residents of Butters, told the truth, represented, and told us what he knew. So did Jim in 2015. That's those actions which everyone here should be doing, I'm not saying you're not, is an accolades of applause compar compared to just not talking up, not bringing up issues, and consequently not addressing facts for direction, policy, discussions, and therefore losing out in terms of what's best for the voters, the residents because we live here, we're 24 seven. And to hear Mr. Deshane and I almost called you Mayor Lopez, sorry, okay. Ms., uh, okay, I think it was Shane's comment. I, I don't think it was grandstanding at all, okay. It's your duty to bring up issues and to bring them up so that one, it's always an even playing field out there. So residents and fellow counselors understand what's happening then my accolades of applause to each and every one of you. And keep coming because we're the eyes and ears. And we can address it because they need to know and we in turn need to know. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the floor for public input? Is anyone else on the floor here for public input? Is there anyone on Zoom for public input? Motion return to the place. Is there anyone else on Zoom for public input? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. Motion return to the regular order of business. Motion made and second to return to the regular order of business. Roll call, please. Mr. President. President Mr. President, you should, it should be a motion to close public input, right? Motion or to close public input. Motion made and second to close public input. Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. <clears throat> 13 yes. And the motion passes. Okay, City so Clerk, do we have any uh, communications. I have none. You have none. I have a communication I'd like to read. All members of the City Council are advised that when attending City Council meeting and City Council committee meetings remotely, 
They should be mindful that uh, ambient noise can be picked up by the microphones in your cell phones or your laptops and interfere with a clear communication of votes and debate. Please take reasonable measures to remove yourself from locations where ambient noise is pre present when attending meetings remotely. Members are also advised that committee comments and inputs from family members or others people present when, present when you are attending a city council meeting remotely should be made privately and not while you are attending a Zoom, a meeting on Zoom. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll take minutes now. Yes, you have uh, the mayor's briefing August 1st and the city council meeting August 1st. Councillor McAuliffe. Motion that the minutes from the August 1st mayor's briefing and August 1st regular meeting of the city council be approved this evening and placed on file. Motion made and second that the, the minutes from August 1st mayor's briefing, August 1st city council meeting be approved this evening. On the motion. So explanatory. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy? Roy? Are you, are you on? Okay. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dobas? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. <clears throat> 13 yes. And a motion passes. Okay, we'll start with Mayor's Order number one. Okay, number one. Order that the sum of $365,400 be hereby appropriate to the following name MIS accounts. TV production director salary of $165,400. PT Chicopee TV staff salary, $100,000. Chicopee TV facilities equipment, $100,000 for a total of $365,400. Set amounts to be taken from the available funds and the receipts reserved for appropriations, peg access, cable grant. Councilor Brooks. Cable account, account, sorry. Councilor Brooks. Make a motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, this will cover costs related to salaries and equipment for the uh, department. Uh, we do receive the PEG grant as part of our charter agreement every year, and some of the monies will be used to offset the costs uh, to the department. Again, for TV production, director salary, part-time TV staff, and then any facility and, and equipment upgrades that are needed. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. yes. And the motion passes. Order that the sum of $25,961.05 be in hereby appropriate to the following named account. Human Resource Special Account for Indemnifications of Police and Fire. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the Stabilization Fund. Contra Lopez. Motion of the mayor's order to be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, self-explanatory. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Yes. Val Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. 
Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13, yes. And a motion passes. Order that the sum of $146,370 be hereby appropriated to the following named account. City Hall Maintenance Special Account for Main Library, HVAC Controller Replacement. Set amounts must be taken from the available funds in the Stabilization Fund for Capital Budgeting Account. Councilor Cushing. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and seconded. The motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. Well, this is for a controller that's going to bring the HVAC system online. Um, it's going to be actually very beneficial. They've been having a lot of issues with that. Uh, technicians will be able to make adjustments remotely instead of having to go out onto the roof and make adjustments, uh, which is very time consuming if you're just adjusting a temperature and things like that. Uh, so this will bring the uh, this facility online with City Hall and, the, and other facilities that you'll see in the next coming orders uh, to get them all into one central place. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes? And a motion passes. Order that the sum of $119,642 being hereby appropriate to the following named account, City Hall Maintenance Special Account for Fire Station 8, James Street, HVAC Control Replacement. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the Stabilization Fund for Capital Budgeting Account. Councilor Zigarowski. Same course, Mr. President. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through stages of the mayor and approved this evening on the motion. Uh, on this motion, $119,642 being appropriated to the uh, fire station on James Street to replace or repair the uh, HVAC controller replacement. Thank you. C Councilor Costello. Thank you. I want to thank the fire chief for always maintaining these buildings. Uh, this is especially important to our area, Ward 9, and the fire chief is on top of all the building problems and he's addressing them, and I want to thank him for that effort. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Lafayette? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampage? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Order that the sum of $240,710.50 be hereby appropriate to the following named account, police special account for weaponry equipment. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund for capital budgeting, budgeting account. Councilor Balak here. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. Uh, on a motion, uh, the purpose for this appropriation is to replace the um, current service weapons for all officers with pistols. They'll be enhanced with premium optics. And also part of the purchasing will be enhancing uh, optics for the patrol rifles. And uh, the enhanced optics will increase the weapons system's accuracy. Uh, basically, the weapons are going to be replaced. They're six years old. Uh, one good thing is uh, we have some Glocks that are going to be traded in, and we're going to get money back in the vicinity of $50,000. So this is needed for public safety, and uh, uh, I support this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? 
Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13, yes. And a motion passes. Order that the sum of $310,000 being hereby appropriate to the following named account, fire special account for repaving apron and parking lot at station four. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization for capital budgeting account. Councilor Tillotson. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. Some major repairs and updates to the fire station. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. yes. Lopez? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Alkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Order that the sum of $38,000 be in here, $38,000 be in here by appropriate to the following named account, fire special account for vehicle purchase. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in a stabilization uh, for capital budgeting account. Councilor Labrie. Same course. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, this is for a vehicle for the fire department. It's going to replace a 2006 Crown Victoria. Uh, it's deteriorated to, point, to the point where it's unsafe for driving. It's uh, not uh, reliable. Uh, they've got a quote uh, for 34125 plus equipment. And I, from what I understand tonight, it's for a limited time only, so we need to act on it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Order that the sum of $215,490 being hereby appropriate to the following named account forestry special account for purchase of a chipper. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization for capital budgeting account. Councilor Roy. Yeah, motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages and a written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received, passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, this appropriation request uh, for the purchase of the towable whole tree chipper per the recommendations of the Capital Planning Committee. The chipper will be utilized by the Forestry Department. The current chipper is two and a half years old, or ten and a half years old, and is not adequate to handle the wood waste that is currently produced by the department. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy? <coughs> yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Order that the sum of $102,925.15 be hereby appropriate to the following named account, DBW Parks Special Account for Purchase of Vehicles. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization for capital budgeting account. 
Councillor Krampitz. Motion that the mayor's order be received and pass through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor on the motion. Uh, again, this is from uh, Capital Planning. This is uh, for the purchase of a dump truck for the uh, Parks Department. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? See? Go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Any other comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President of the Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Govis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny at Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. <clears throat> Order that the sum of $142,500 being hereby appropriate to the following named account, DBW Park Special Account for purchase of equipment. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization for capital budget account. Councilor Costello. Motion that the mayor's orders be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion. Yes, this is a um, capital Planning Committee recommendation in regards to replacing a Ford Explorer, which is, which will, is the current vehicle is two thousand is a two thousand and nine, and it has reached its um, the end of its useful life. This Explorer will be replaced by a Ford F one five zero pickup truck. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Dillerton? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovich? Yes. Bouchain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Van Pacello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. Mr. President, if I may, as a point of information, that was Mayor, Mayor Order 10, correct? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Um, that's not an F-150. That's a backhoe. Backhoe. Um, so I just want to, as a point of information for uh, clarity for the one. public, yeah, we just I Actually, I think he's, we skipped one. Keith, I think we skipped, uh, yeah, we skipped nine. 11. 11. Nine. You did 11. We're on 11 next. No, we skipped no nine. Mayor Order 10 is... DPW Park Hundred, Special Account for uh, purchase uh, of a backhoe. Correct. Utilized by the Parks Department. 142.50. Yeah. Right. Not an F-150. That's a different order. Oh, he said that. Yeah. Keith, if you could read number 10 over, please. Just to uh, clarify. There's no need to. Uh, okay, I can do that. I think uh, Piniac Costello mentioned F-150. Right. That's yeah. the only oh, time I heard F-150. Yeah. I, oh, I, I don't it. think the error was on reading the order itself. What I'm saying is, as a point of information, the description that was given, oh, by I think, her was, was wrong. the wrong order. Sorry. You picked so, the next one. Yeah. So, okay, thank you. Thank you for the correction. Ro okay, roll call, please. Oh, we did it. Did. Next one. We I'm did sorry, the roll Keith. call passed. We're on item 11. Yep, 11. Order that the sum of $66,178.40 being hereby appropriate to the following named account, TBW Park Special Account for purchase of a new crew cap. Set amounts to be taken from the available funds in the stabilization for capital budgeting account. Councilor McAuliffe. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on his written recommendation. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the Rick recommendation of the mayor on the motion. Uh, this is a, a part of a uh, number of vehicle purchases. Uh, the mayor talked about it at length in his briefing. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom seeing on roll call, please? President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. <clears throat> 13 yes. 
And the motion passes. Order that the sum of $66,178.40 be hereby appropriate to the following named account, flood control special account for purchase of vehicles. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization for capital budgeting account. Councilor Delmas. Motion that the minutes order is received and passed through all stages in the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. Uh, on the motion, as, as Councilor McAuliffe stated, it's part of a, a group of purchasing of vehicles. This is for a Ford F-350 crew cab pickup. Thank you, sir. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Rampage? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Bouchain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Councilor Tillotson, could you pull uh, your phone a little closer? It's very hard to hear so that they could be recording it. Okay, no problem. Uh, thank you. Order that, the, order that the sum of $49,765 be hereby appropriate to the following name the account, TBW Administrative Special Account for Purchase of Vehicles. That amount be taken from the available funds in the stabilization for capital budgeting account. Councilor Brooks. Make a motion to the mayor's order to be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made, in se motion made in second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, this is uh, replacing uh, DPW 1, a Ford Explorer, uh, per the recommendation of the Capital Planning Committee. Um, it's going to be replaced by a Ford F-150 pickup truck, which would make it, uh, give the department a little bit more utility. Uh, the current vehicle that is being retired is a 2009, and it's uh, reached the end of its useful life. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaPlante? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. <clears throat> McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampage? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Touchane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Order that the City Council accept the Planning Department grant in the amount of $116,600 from the U.S. Department of Energy, Energy Efficient, Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant Formula Program. Funding from this grant will be utilized to reduce the cost of much needed updates of severely outdated and inefficient lighting in the City Hall building. Said grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Council Lopez. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, this is accepting a grant of $116,600. Uh, this will be used to update the lighting here in City Hall. It's severely outdated, and um, not only is it not efficient in energy, energy, it also is not efficient in terms of costs. So this will help offset that as the planning department moves forward to finalize the budget for phase two of the City Hall rehab project. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampage? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Order that the City Council accept the Planning Department grant, sorry, the Planning Department Technical Assistant grant through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Broadband Institute Municipal Digital Equality Planning Program. The City of Chigurhs project has a value of $105,000 and the MBI will provide funds directly to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on the City's behalf. 
Said grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A and 53A and one half. Councilor Cushain. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion. So this grant's going to be uh, managed through the PVPC. Uh, it's going to hopefully uh, identify and work with the gaps in digital equity that were highlighted during the COVID pandemic. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zigorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Shane? Yes. Sorry, I was on mute. Lopez? Yes. Falcon? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dogus? Yes. Cushane? Yes. LeBrie? Yes. Finan Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Order that the City Council accept the Planning Department Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness 2.0 pilot grant in the amount of $95,000 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. Funding from this grant will accommodate and update in-depth assessment of vulnerabilities and pertinent responses to climate change scenarios that will be strategically implemented. Said grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Councilor Zigorowski. Of course, Mr. President. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. This, this order is in preparation of a 2.0 pilot grant program. Funding for this MVP 20 program will accommodate an updated in-debt assessment of vulner vulnerabilities and pertinent responses. This is in conjunction to the next order, number 17. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Say that 10 times. Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President McClam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zigorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. 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 Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Touchane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Order that the sum of $95,000 being hereby appropriate to the following named account. Planning Department Special Account for Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. Set of miles be taken from the available funds in the Stabilization Fund. Councilor Ballack here. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second, the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, this is uh, in relation to the previous order uh, of the grant of 95,000. So in order to accept the award, uh, we're requesting an appropriation of 95,000 as the MVP 2.0 program is structured as a reimbursable grant program. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zigorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinnie Costello? Yes. <clears throat> 13 yes. And a motion passes. Order that the City Council accept the FY22 FEMA assistance to firefighters grant to the Chigley Fire Department in the amount of $40,977.27. Said grant will be used to purchase personal protective equipment, including turnout gear, helmets, SCBA equipment, and is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Councilor Tillotson. Motion is the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages upon a written recommendation of the mayor. 
Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. Uh, the motion uh, should I be uh, a grant that's going to help out the firefighters. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Billington? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Francis? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Order that the sum of $40,977.27 being hereby appropriate to the following named account. Fire special account for purchase of equipment. Set amounts to be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Councilor Labrie. Same course. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, uh, we are now uh, spending that grant that we just approved. And uh, we're buying some equipment, some turnout, some helmets, uh, and we're just going to spend out of this grant the 40977 And it's a grant that requires us to contribute 10%. Uh, so we're going to take $4,097.73. It's coming out of the fire account for equipment. So it's not coming from us. It doesn't have to be appropriated by this committee. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Order that the sum of $10,200 be hereby appropriate to the following name account. Police special account for purchase of bulletproof vests. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Councilor Roy. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second to the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, the police department is requesting that an appropriation in the amount of $10,200 be added to their special account to purchase bulletproof vest. These funds are needed for the purchase of the vest for the eight academy graduates. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. <clears throat> 13 yes. And a motion passes. Order that the sum of $6,000 be in hereby appropriate to the following named account, health expense account for special services. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Councilor Krampitz. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second to the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. Uh, yes, this is for the uh, health department uh, in order to keep... Uh, uh, moving forward with problem properties and other issues that uh, we're having with uh, landlords and, and that. Uh, this helps pay for the uh, $25 uh, uh, dollar delivery from the sheriff to the uh, uh, to the, the landlord or the property owner uh, for issues that come up before the health department. Thank you. Court. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? 
Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dolbus? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinia Castell? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Order the City Council accept the Bulletproof Vest Reimbursement Grant in the amount of $10,800 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Secure Security Office of Grants and Research to the Chicopee Police Department. Said grant is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Councilor Costello. Thank you. Motion that the Mayor's order be received <clears throat> and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the Motion mayor. made a second. The motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the Mayor. On the motion, please. Okay. This is the Chigabee Police Department has received a reimbursement from the state as part of the Bulletproof Vest Program. And under this program, once the federal government reimburses the city for half the cost of new vests purchased, the state will reimburse the other half. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny Costello? Yes. <clears throat> yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Order that the City Council accept the, accept the attached, name, attached named donations in the amount of $3,500 for the National Night Out event. So said donations are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Councilor McAuliffe. <clears throat> Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on his written recommendation. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. Self explanatory. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Cushane? Cushane? He said yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinna Costello? Abstain. 13 yes. 13 yes and one abstention, right? Yeah, 12 yes and one abstention. 12 and one, okay, thank you. And the motion passes. Or that the City Council accept the attached in-kind don donations with a value of $816 for the National Night Out event. Said donations are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A and one half. Councilor Delbaz. Uh, same course, Mr. President. Motion, motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation. The mayor on the motion, please. On the motion, Mr. President, um, self-explanatory, National Night Out was a great event. Thank you to, uh, for all the in-kind donations to all the vendors. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yeah. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinna and Costello? Yes. Pinna and Costello? Yes. Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. The Honorable the City of Chigabee Golf Commission is hereby authorized to prepare or lease a request for proposals for five-year maintenance contract for the city golf course. And the city is hereby authorized to enter into said five-year maintenance contract with the successful proponent. Councilor Brooks. Make a motion that the mayor's order be received and pass through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and second that the motion be received and pass through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. 
On the motion, the only material change in this uh, RFP would be extending the uh, traditional three-year to a five-year contract. Um, the uh, company that's awarded the RFP will still uh, maintain the city's golf courses, and the company uh, that's awarded will also um, be utilized to maintain our city uh, equipment that they utilize to um, mow the course and uh, take care of it. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, Rocco. President LaFlamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. We have a new appointment of Stephen Jahowski as the Chief Human Resource Officer. Concha Lopez. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the recommendation of the, of, of the mayor and the appointment be approved this evening. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, luck would have it that this would be mine this evening. Um, I would first like to talk about very quickly what happened during the mayor's briefing today. I think that the situation was improperly managed. Um, I think it's inappropriate, and I'm not surprised by the inappropriate commentary and accusations from Councillor McAuliffe this evening, claiming that I was grandstanding when I was simply doing my job as a city councillor and asking, for que asking questions and for answers that the residents deserve. Um, I would like to thank some of the public commentary today, which defended that because it is our job to ask questions. I also think it was improperly managed to allow Councillor McAuliffe to go off and make those accusations without being stopped, yet I was stopped when I wanted to speak. Um, so I want to put that on the record. I think the May, I, w I went and reviewed and had conversations um, during our, our break with our DPW superintendent, Liz Batista, who was part of the committee that selected uh, Steve Sajowski. And it seems like there were multiple iterations of the job description at one point um, because the, the posting was posted more than once, according to Liz. So in the newest posting, uh, the mayor obviously didn't know what he was talking about because in the new posting, it also did allow for a bachelor's level director. Um, so I, I still don't think our questions were properly answered this evening. Um, I think we had val I had valid questions and we deserve the answer to them. Um, the mayor offered to give me answers tomorrow, but the vote is today. So I'm still not in favor of voting for this because we didn't have the answers that we asked for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Councilor DeBoss. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, unfortunately, I also won't be voting for this appointment tonight. Uh, I know my, my mother knows the uh, the applicant, you know, and, and uh, you know, I have nothing against him, but as Councilor Lo uh, Lopez said, um, you know, one, I was concerned about the, uh, the master's degree and the job posting, but also uh, I'm, I'm, you know, really concerned about this uh, uh, insurance uh, issue. Um, you know, we've never been notified about what actually happened with the insurance issue. Everything that I know about it is through Mass Live articles, which is pretty sad. I've asked multiple times uh, publicly and privately for more information about the insurance issue. Uh, where we're buying insurance for uh, deceased and retired employees. Uh, I have no idea how much money uh, was lost. Uh, you know, some articles blame Paul Winspear, some articles say it, it was just a glitch. Uh, I have no idea, you know, e even if we could get notified in executive session if necessary, uh, we just don't know what's going on with the insurance issue. Uh, and during the June uh, budget hearings, um, this applicant, um, I don't want to butcher his name, uh, you know, uh, Councilor Costello asked him several questions during the budget hearings, and he said during the budget hearing in a recorded meeting um, that his office was not purchasing the insurance uh, and was not managing some aspects of the insurance, and that's very alarming to me. Uh, and until I get answers either publicly or privately, uh, I'm not going to avoid. I'm not going to vote on the appointee for this position. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor, Councilor Costello? Thanks. I, I appreciate the fact that uh, Councillor Lopez and Councillor Dobas um, have uh, questioned uh, in regards to this particular appointment. Um, with the insurance, the health insurance issue is a very important issue. I believe that the City Council stated back in May that once a month through the Human Resources Committee, we would be updated in regards to the insurance. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that the City Council is taking very seriously. Um, this is something that 
the Human Resources Department has to take seriously. Um, I agree with Councillor Dobas. There are still many questions in regards to the insurance, um, and they have to be answered. And we should be updated in regards to what progress is being made in regards to the insurance. That's a major issue. And that particular night, when we talked about the budget, that line item was $15 million for the Human Resources Department. Mm -hmm. And Councillor Dobas is right. When I asked the question, it was not clear what the answer was in regards to the budget. So I agree with uh, Councillor Dobas. I agree with Councillor Lopez in regards to uh, proceeding with this. The health insurance issue is a priority, and it must be made a priority with the Human Resources Department sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bree. Yeah, I don't think the new applicant should be uh, held up here. Uh, he wasn't here for uh, the problems that occurred uh, over a number of years. Uh, you know, we're going to get our reports uh, uh, eventually, and, and, you know, hopefully he's working on them. Uh, he will come in front of the human resources and give a report, I'm sure. Uh, that should not hold up our, you know, granting him a contract. Uh, he's been doing the job, I believe, since uh, July 1st. Uh, so he's waited long enough, and uh, th th he did not create these problems. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Cushane. I guess concerned with the job posting. If the job posting had said it was a master's level requirement, how many people with a bachelor's level didn't apply because they felt they weren't qualified? So if a bachelor's level is acceptable according to the job description, then how many you know, how many qualified candidates did we not interview because we didn't put it out there for them to realize they could apply? So that's concerning. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Uh, this is Councillor Brooks. It, it clearly delineated in the um, job description master's level or bachelor's with requisite experience. So, I mean, if I'm seeking a job, I, I think it's incumbent upon me to read through the whole job description and then I'm if I need a moment to determine whether or not I feel like I'm qualified or I want to still apply, that's up to me. But it, it didn't only say master's. It did allow for a bachelor's degree with a requisite amount of experience, which this gentleman has. So I think that, you know, while I appreciate the value of a master's degree and I wouldn't trade mine for the world, I also think that it's, you know, it's really incumbent upon the applicant to read fully through and carefully any job description that's provided to them. I don't think it was deterrent for people not to apply because it, Right after the master's degree sentence, there is one about having a bachelor's degree and four years of experience. So I think we need to be careful about representing that it was master's degree or bust when clearly in the job description they did reference a bachelor's degree with the requisite experience of four years. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from Zoom? Frank, Frank I just... Hold on. I'll Can try. I please? Yeah. Any other comments from Zoom? Any other comments from the floor? Councillor Costello, second Thank time. I appreciate the uh, explanation by Councillor Brooks in regards to this particular posting. Um, I think he clarified it very well. Um, and that's putting my vote in the direction of appointment for this particular individual. But I am going to repeat again that that health insurance issue has to be a priority because that's something that is concerning and it has to be addressed because it involves a lot of money, taxpayers' money. But again, a special thank you to Councillor Brooks for letting us know about the, uh, the wording. And you can tell Councillor Brooks has a master's degree. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, roll call, please. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Uh, yes. <clears throat> no, it's it. Yeah. Zigorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Professor Brooks? <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Lopez? No. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dobis? No. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 11 yes, 2 no. And the motion approved. Okay.
Be in order that the City Council hereby approves the employment agreement between the City of Chicopee and Chief Human Resource Officer Stephen Zachowski, which is attached to this order as Exhibit A. Councilor, who am I up to? I'm sorry. Cushane. Motion that Mayor's order be received. Pass through all stages and the contract approved this evening. Motion made and second that the motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor and approved this evening. On the motion. This is just a contract for the previous appointment. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments <laughs> from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President Clam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? No. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? No. Cushane? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 11 yes, 2 no. And it is approved this evening. Yes. Okay, we have the reappointment of Elizabeth Batista as the DPW superintendent for five years. Councilor Zigorowski. Motion that the mayor's order 28 take its first reading and pass tonight. Motion made in second that the, the Motion made and second that the mo motion be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation and approved this evening. On the motion, please. On the motion, uh, Ms. Batista has been in the same position for several years, and I realize that we passed something a while back that any reappointment would come before the Human Resource Committee. That's for permission. Uh, That's not for employment. Not for But she's being reappointed. And no matter what we say about her, she's done an excellent job. I mean, the backup paperwork that we have showed us that there were several different cities that have higher salaries, medium salaries, and she's warranted the salaries that she negotiated with according to our documents in the next order. I will be voting on this for passage tonight, even though uh, I think we still have to send it to our, our human resource committee because it's a reappointment. Uh, so just a correction. Uh, for department heads and that, we do not send no, it to okay. resources. We approve this okay, evening. So I'll, I'll, I'll make the motion to approve it tonight. Thank you. Motion made and second. We already second that. So any other questions from the floor? Councilor Ballack here. Yeah, no, thank you. No, uh, I've had the honor and pleasure of working with Liz, and she's very professional, well-qualified. So we want to keep you, Liz. We don't want you to go anywhere. So I approve it tonight. I will be voting for it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Councilor Krampitz. Uh, just quickly, I've, I've had the chance to work with uh, Ms. Batista for, uh, since she started when she was in, in uh, the engineering department and uh, you know, moved up the ladder. She's always been a pleasure to work with uh, and, uh, and her staff. So I uh, look forward to her reappointment tonight. Thank you. I do just want to say, yeah. Any other comments from the floor? Yeah, Councilor uh, Costello. Yeah, I like, um, I like DPW. It's a great department, and it's good because you have a good administrator, and we're very fortunate we can retain that talent. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? <laughs> Councilor Labrie. Yes, uh, I'm for this tonight. I, I think we have uh, the best uh, DPW in uh, Western Mass. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Lopez. I think this is like the hundredth one, but I do also want to thank uh, Liz Batista for her work. Uh, during the mayoral briefing, Councillor Couchet made some comments about other folks, uh, lower tier workers, also deserving a raise. And I do believe that that is true, that they do deserve a raise, but that does not mean that Liz Batista does not deserve a raise. Um, I do think that if you compare Liz Batista's current salary to um, some of the comparisons that were provided to us by uh, Mike Pease, this afternoon um, and some of the research that we may have done on our own, I, I do think that her salary should be increased um, and I think that her that she is worth that. Um, but I do also agree that other folks do deserve to have a livable wage and that we should look at um, some of the lower tiered workers and you know what they're getting paid because it should be uh, adjusted accordingly as well. But thank you, Liz, for the work that you do. Councillor Roy. I don't want to be left out, Liz, but any more accolades, you're not going to be able to get out of the room. <laughs> 
Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Job. I'm not done yet, <clears throat> Mr. Oh, President. Sorry. <laughs> You've done a wonderful job. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank God there's a double door. Sorry about that. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Councilor Tillotson, go ahead. You got your mic on, I see. You all set, Jim? I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, um, I'd like to see if I can speak on this for one Mo moment, motion please. Motion, I'll let the president speak. Roll call, please. Set the president of the Abstain. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? I guess. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobas? Yes. Cushane? We have to. Labrie? Yes. Pinna Costello? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I just want to take a minute. I, I know I said it a little bit in the chair's briefing, but I, I just want to really thank uh, Liz and, and John, the t the, actually the t her whole team, as you mentioned, I had mentioned earlier, uh, regarding her and her team, because without a team, you get nothing done. And she's developed a good team. Yes, I agree with Councilor Lopez that, you know, th there's other people that we should be looking at. And I know they did a wage check uh, several years ago. I think Paul Winspear did a project on that, and uh, I hope we continue with that. With that said, I still believe that she is the best qualified person for us because of the fact that she's, she's proved herself to me. She's proved when I, as president of the board, get calls from the city council and have to ask her to push a little bit to try to get some things done, uh, her, whether it's her or John or her team, um, I do the best I can. So she's there for us, and that's why I think that's important for us as counselors to have somebody on our side that we get all our complaints from the residents and that uh, they, they get done in a, uh, in a reasonable fashion, if possible. If not, sometimes we have to wait for reasons, but um, I'm willing and happy to approve her this evening. Okay, with that being said, let's have a roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. T Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyrie. Yes. Krampus. Yes. Dovis. Yes. Duchesne. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pinia Castell. Yes. 13 yes. And proud to say the motion passes. Be in order that the City Council approve the five year contract beginning July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2028, for the Superintendent of Public Works and authorizes the Council President to sign the contract. Councilor Balakir. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor and that the five-year contract for the superintendent of public works be approved this evening. Motion made and second that the motion received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor and this contract approved this evening and council president to sign the contract on the motion. Uh, on the motion, self-explanatory. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Thank you, sir. Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Billetson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushing? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Congratulations, Liz. Congratulations, Liz. Congratulations. Order that the City Council accept the grant to the Chigabee Council on Aging in the amount of $18,000 from the City of Chigabee Community Development Block Grant. Said grant will be used for exercise program for seniors and is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Correcting. Jim. You got to give it to Jim. Here. You're up to Jim. Oh, Jim Tillotson, I'm sorry. Councilman Tillotson. Tillotson, yes. What? It's your motion, Jim. Jim, it's your motion. 
Make the motion, Jim. Uh, motion to approve. What? On the motion. Anything from Zoom? Anything other counselors? Friendly amendment to amend that motion to motion to receive. Yeah. Any other comments? Please call the roll. Wait, I'm sorry. President, President Laflamme. This is not proper. Abstain. Hold on. Uh, can, can we just have the proper motion on the floor? I don't think that motion is going to be sufficient. So he read the, Jim, can you just read the order itself, order 30, and just uh, uh, to approve? To accept. To, to accept. accept, I'm sorry. Order that the city council accept the grant to the Chicopee Council on aging and the amount of, let's see where it is. Eighteen thousand yeah. at the city of Chicopee Community Development. You have to second that, Jim. Motion made and seconded. Uh, on the motion. Uh, except the block grant and, uh, and uh, it will be used for exercise procedures from okay any other comments from the council or on zoom please call the roll president flam abstain roy yes tillotson yes Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Francis? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Bouchain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny Costello? The motion. Well, yes, one abstention. Motion passes. Motion passes. Or that the City Council accept the donations in the amount of $5,896.50 to Chicopee Council on Aging for senior meals for the month of July 2023. Said donations are accepted in accordance with Mass General Act, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Council will agree. Yes, uh, motion that the uh, City Council accept the donations in the amount of $5,896 uh, to the City Council on Aging for senior meals. Motion made and seconded that the motion be received and passed through all stages. On the motion. On the motion, self-explanatory. Any other comments from the floor or on Zoom? Please call the roll. President Laflamme. Abstain. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dobis? Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny Costello? Yes. 12 yes, one abstention. And a motion passes. A uh, motion for a three minute recess. Motion made and second for a three minute recess. Roll call, please. Three enough. President Laflamme? And it will be three minutes. Yes. <laughs> Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dobis? No. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny Costello? Yes. Well, yes, one no. And the motion passes.
you one? You know how many I got on her tonight? One, two, or two, and one time. And one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven of them. She's doing good. No, considering she's young. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight is young. Okay. Uh, we're almost the third. We're almost the third. Where are these guys no. we're, we're 99. So there's a, just about a third, right? Please take your seats. 32. We still have another <laughs> 60, 50 60. items. 60 <laughs> items. 60 more to go. We got another 60 items going. And what I'm, I'm going to request, uh, if the counselors have uh, things going to committee, to please uh, uh, send it to committee. You may speak a little bit about it, but don't give a long story. Uh, we have 60 of them. There's no need for a long story. We're going to have a public hearing, as well as anything you can do that's going to go to a public hearing, please send it to the public hearing and discuss it there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take a roll call, please, to return to the meeting, please. Okay. Go ahead, Keith. President Laflam. Here. Roy. Yes. He's here. Tillotson. Here. Zigorowski. Here. McCullough. Here. Brooks. Here. Lopez. Is this a roll call or is this a motion to? Which one is this? Because it's it's it a yes or a here? It's a roll call to return to the regular order. The so motion to return to the regular I order did of say business? That. Yes. Motion to return to the regular oh, no. business. You have to second it. Yeah. You can't make the motion. I'll second it. Thank you. But okay. I should have said just return yes, to the order. Yes, I was very confused. Uh, so my answer is yes. <laughs> thank God. It's a little late. <laughs> okay, thank you. Continue, Keith. Oh, God. here? Yes. All right. I, I think we need to clarify what the motion was uh, yeah. because now we have six here's and two yeses. Okay, so. I'll make the motion again. Motion. No, you can't make the motion. Motion to return to the regular order of. Make it, Gary. I just made it. So you just have to second it. I'll motion. I'll second the mo. I'll second the motion to return to regular order of business. This is getting a little too confusing. All right. Thank you. Well. Roll call, please. President Flam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Cushane? Yes, here. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee. Uh, be it ordained that Chapter 7 of the Ordinance for, for the City of Chicopee as amended, be it hereby further amended by striking out salaries as they pertain to the following name that counts and inserting in place thereof the following to be operative July 1st, 2023. Human Resource Group 2, Assistant Director, $62,254.40. Benefits coordinator, $60,000, sorry, $60,694.40. Senior generalist, $56,555.20. Administrative assistant, $38,438.40. Generalist, $46,886.40. Councilor Labrie. A uh, motion that the uh, ordinance committee uh, report be received and uh, acted on this evening. Motion made and second that the ordinance committee report oh. be received. Take a second, second reading and be enrolled and ordained. On the motion, please. Go ahead. On a motion, uh, human, yeah, self-explanatory. Uh, human resource assistant director sixty two two, benefits coordinator sixty thousand six ninety four, senior generalist fifty six. Vice chair of ordinance. Go ahead. Five fifty five. I'm just uh, administrative assistant thirty eight. Uh, 438, generalist 46, 860, uh, 886. Thank you. On the motion. Uh, Self-explanatory. Concert Krampus. I see your hand, Concert Krampus. Go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, part of the 2% uh, raises uh, that were given to folks that were not in the union, uh, and this, uh, this uh, ordinance uh, update reflects that. Hang on. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? 
Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Flynn? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Douglas? Yes. Bouchain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny yes. and Priscilla? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Hold on, Keith. Uh, I'd like to take item 45. A motion. A, m a motion to take uh, item 45 uh, out of order. Motion made a second to take item 45 out of order. Roll call, please. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Fabri? Yes. Penny at Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the License Committee for an application for a Class II license for Best Car, Best Deal, located at 400 East Main Street. Councilor Brooks. I'm going to defer to Councilor Krampitz. I was on vacation that week. I did not attend the meeting. Concert Krampitz. Uh, yes, motion that the license committee report uh, be received and approved uh, this evening with uh, restrictions. Motion made and second that the license committee report be received and approved this evening with restrictions. On the motion, please. Yes, this was for a uh, class two license uh, for uh, uh, best car, best deal located at 400 East Main Street, uh, uh, building D or suite D. Um, Basically, it was the uh, typical conditions, good housekeeping, no outside storage, no junk cars, no outside repairs. License holder must secure a certificate of occupancy prior to exercising the rights granted under this license. Uh, total number of vehicles was 24, two inside, uh, 18 outside, one employee, and then uh, four customers. Uh, one of the conditions was fire department approval required uh, and also no uh, Sunnyside Street uh, exit. Uh, I did speak with the applicant tonight. He did say that the fire department did come out and uh, give their approval. We haven't gotten a written report yet, but uh, he, he did say the fire department was out there. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from the Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Yeah. Brooks? Abstain. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinan Costello? Yes. 12 yes, one abstention. And a motion passes. I'd like to make a motion to take item 46 out of order. Motion made and second to take item 46 out of order. Roll call, please. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the License Committee for an application for an auto detailing license for Best Car, Best Deal, located at 400 East Main Street. Concert Krampus. Motion that the License Committee report be received and approved tonight with <coughs> restrictions. Motion made and second that the License Committee report be received and approved this evening with restrictions. On the motion, please. Uh, again, this is uh, the, the same restrictions as on the uh, Class II uh, license, and uh, you know they did uh, meet with the Fire Department, so everything's all set. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. 
McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Stain. <clears throat> Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes, one abstention. And a motion passes. Gary, you want one more? Yes, please. Uh, Take item 47 out of order. Motion to take item 47 out of order. Motion made and second to take item 47 out of order. Uh, Mr. President, if we may add a friendly amendment, you want 58, right? No, he's got it. He's We're going to do each one separate. Oh, yeah. We have oh. to. We can't take multiple out of order at once. Well, and not have to keep to roll calling. I rather I? do them singly right now. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. President Flam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. yes. Labrie? Yes. Finney and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the License Committee for an application for an auto repair license for Best Car, Best Deal. Located at 400 East Main Street. Concert Krampitz. Motion that the license committee report for the auto repair license be approved this evening uh, with uh, the uh, restrictions as, as stated. In the previous order, I can read uh, Councilor Krampitz, it's all said. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Abstain. Lopez? Yes. Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Grampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinan Costello? Yes. 12 yes, one abstention? And a motion passes. Motion to take uh, item 49 out of order. 59. No, he wants 49. Oh, he still have one more. It's 49, Jeez, there's and 58 and 59. Go ahead with that one, please. What are we taking? Uh, motion He's to take 49, item 49 out of order. 58. 40, 49. <laughs> Go ahead. Roll call, please. You got a second that. Oh, motion made and second to allow uh, out of 49 out of order. Roll call, please. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yep. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Any Costello? Yes. <clears throat> 13 yes. And the motion passes. Okay, I have number 49. 49. Favorable report with a motion to postpone? Huh? No. No? Favorable report then. Favorable report from the License Committee. Be it ordered that Royal Coach Sales LLC 576 East Street be called before the City of Chicopee License Committee for the City Council to discuss the license currently held by Royal Co Coach Sales LLC. Change address on licenses from 576 East Street to 574 East Street after review by Engineering Department. Concert Krampitz. Uh, I think we were supposed to do a different one, but right. could you do 49, please? This one, uh, uh, motion that the license committee report uh, be received and uh, postponed to the uh, call of the chair or next meeting for the license. Motion uh, made and second that the license committee be report be received and postponed to the call of the chair on the motion. Yeah, the applicant was not there tonight and we received information uh, from him that he had uh, was moving to Ludlow. Uh, so probably the license will be revoked or expired. Uh, but uh, he's no longer at that location. So Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Yeah. Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. 
Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Abstain. Lopez? Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Thobus? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes, one abstention. And a motion passes. Item. Yes, a motion to take item 58 out of order. Motion made a second to take item 58 out of order. Roll call, please. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 13 yes. And the motion passes. Councilor Balak here. Uh, I have to read the order first. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Keith. It's okay. Okay, we have a zone change application from business A to IPUD2 for 2.0621 acres of property located at 41 Robbins Road for the purpose of constructing a commercial building with associated site improvements for use by a commercial electrical contractor. Councilor Ballack here. Uh, motion made to receive and approve the zone change application from business A to IPUD2 for... Motion. Motion made and second to approve the zoning committee report from business A to IPU iPod 2 for 2.0621 acres. On the motion, please. Yeah, on the motion, um, this is um, for the purpose of construction of commercial building uh, with associated site improvements for use by a commercial electrical contractor, uh, Lipinski Electrical, and uh, we had an interesting meeting about this, and uh, this would definitely help the city in terms of putting something back in the tax rolls and a business coming back. So uh, we're in favor of this uh, this evening. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Councilor uh, Costello. Yes, uh, again, and we were at the zoning committee, and uh, we thank the individual for coming back to Chicopee to bring his business back to the city and create the uh, jobs and the tax base. We, this is a wonderful business, doesn't affect any abutters, and uh, again, we thank him for his efforts. Thank Thanks. you. Concert Krampitz. Uh, yes, I did get um, two phone calls about this uh, after the zoning committee meeting. Uh, one of them was, um, they lived in the area, but they were outside of the uh, abutters notices, and, and they were not in favor at all, and then a, uh, another resident contacted me, and they were neutral on it, and uh, but just had concerns to make sure that um, they weren't let to do whatever they wanted to do with the property, that they just wanted some oversight to make sure. And I know uh, I did speak to uh, uh, to planning, and you know, there's, there is going to be a review of the property when the building and all of that uh, uh, goes in to kind of keep that... Uh, uh, on the straight and narrow, and if and if you know if it exceeds uh, issues that we have in our zoning uh, ordinances, then you know we'll uh, have the building uh, commissioner get involved in that. Thank but, you, uh, Councilor Balakir. But, but uh, oh, you yeah, know, the uh, you know, I didn't receive. I know I didn't receive any calls from the the abutters that had been notified. Right. Uh, so I'm I'm in favor of it passing tonight. So thank you. You all set? Yep. Councilor Balakir. Yeah, thank you. No, I just wanted to add that uh, we work closely with planning on this, and this is a site that uh, really could uh, be properly developed, and I think it would enhance the city. So that's, uh, I think it, I, it's, it's a good deal for the city. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillinson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? McCulloch? I think he's off. I think he just went off. Yeah, he's off. Okay. All right, out of chair. Brooke? No, he's Brooke? off. He's not out of chair. Yeah. Okay. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. 
Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny Costello? Yes. Never playing. 12 yes. yes. And the motion passes. Motion to take uh, item 59 out of order. Motion made in second to take item 59 out of order. Roll call, please. President LaFlan. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Sure. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampus? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finnette Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have a special permit application under 275-58C5 and 4EG4 for the purpose of creating a mixed-use property. Business A, residential, with two one-bedroom units and a business building located at 520 Chicopee Street. Waiver requested to reduce paving requirement from six spaces to three. Contra ballot here. Uh, motion made Favorable to receive. Report. Motion made to receive and approve the special permit application for the purpose of creating a mixed-use property. Mo okay. Motion made and second to approve the zoning committee report. <laughs> Mr. President. Uh, hold on. Mr. President, the, there's two votes here. There's the motion to approve the special permit to create a mixed-use property, and then there's a motion to create. He's got, he's got two motions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, again, I'm going to let me just finish. Uh, a committee, motion to approve the zoning committee report uh, for 520 Chickabee Street. On the motion. Okay, on the motion. Um, this, uh, um, <clears throat> this is a, a property that was involved with the receivership uh, with the city of Chickabee approximately seven years ago. The applicant has maintained the property, and the proposed property is to replicate the existing structure on a 3,330 square foot piece of property. So the motion is to, uh, to approve the special permit and ensure the applicant meets all applicable building and fire requirements in the construction of the building located at 520 Chickabee Street uh, with the following uh, conditions. Um, one of them was that the applicant had to pay an outstanding lien of $183 and change before the city council meeting. Uh, I did check with our office and that was paid on 8-31-2023. And uh, this will be a permit to run with the land. So uh, Mr. President, we're gonna uh, vote on the motion to approve the special permit first. That'll be the first vote. Motion made and second that we vote on the special permit first. Okay, on yep. the motion that we're going to vote yep, on the on special the motion. permit first. Okay, thank you. Um, any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom for the special permit? Roll call, please. President Flam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finney and Costello? Yes. <clears throat> 12 yes. And the motion passes on that one. Next one. And uh, the uh, second vote, uh, Mr. President, is regarding a waiver requested to reduce the parking requirement from six spaces to three spaces. Uh, regarding the property of 520 Chickpea Street. Motion made and second that the waiver request reduction paving requirements from six spaces to three spaces be approved this evening. On the motion. That is, that is the second waiver. You're right. Yes. That's it. And that's the vote. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Councilor Lopez. I just want to uh, make a quick comment and acknowledge that there was public input on this item um, this evening, and I want to thank the gentleman who came, uh, Mr. Lamoth, and gave public input on the item. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments on Zoom? Any comments on Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. 
Stop here. Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. Well, yes. In a motion passes. I just want to thank uh, you allowing this to happen. We have uh, all these people that we just voted on were sitting out in the audience, and with this many, uh, um, we have 60, 70 more to go. We don't want them sitting here, and they're all shaking their head. Thank you. So thank you for coming to this evening. We'll continue on with our agenda. Okay, back to item 33. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee be it ordained that Chapter 7 of the Ordinances for the City of Chicopee as amended be hereby further amended as follows. Human Resource Group 2, add Benefits Coordinator Number 2, $52,388.72. Set an ordinance to be effective August 1st, 2023. Concert Krampitz. Motion that the uh, ordinance take its second and final reading be enrolled and ordained. Motion made and second. The Ordinance Committee report take its second and final reading and be enrolled or in on the motion, please. Uh, yeah, this is a, a new position that's being added to our, our ordinances for the uh, benefit coordinator number two. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President McClam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Yeah. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Rapids? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finan Costello? Yes. Well, yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee be it ordained by the City Council that the Code of the City of Chigawe through the year 1991 as amended, being hereby further amended. As follows, Chapter 275-9. Add to the end of 275-9 the letter F. Contra Krampitz. Motion that the Ordinance Committee take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. On the motion. Yes, this had also gone to, uh, to zoning. Essentially, this was uh, for the, um, uh, the overlay district. Um, it was originally at one year, and there was a lot of discussion about whether to make it three years or split it to two years. And I think uh, after you know a good amount of, of back and forth, uh, it was decided to allow the council to pick uh, one, two, or three years uh, at the time of, of approval. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Hold on, Keith. Mr. President, I believe that you got a typo here on this. It says shall lapse in a period of three years, but I think the committee approved one to three years. I think it says I, period of one to three years. It says. Uh, so what I'm reading, it says shall lapse in a period of three years, but I, I went back and looked the at agenda The agenda item is wrong, but the actual order is correctly written. The order is right. The agenda, the agenda is wrong. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, my mistake. I didn't have it in front of me. So, yeah, so, so you, okay, right I just want to clarify. Okay. Thank, Thank you for clarifying that, bringing that to our attention. Go ahead, Keith. Hey, President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Yeah. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Alkir? Yes. Rapids? Yes. Dobis? Point, this is one to three years. Yes. Correct. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. I've, my vote is yes. Cushane? Right. Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee being ordained by the City Council of the Code of the City of Chigui for the year 1991 as amended, being hereby further amended as follows. Delete Chapter 275-66A in its entirety and in certain place thereof, 275-66A, Burnett Road. Councilor Krampitz. Motion that the Ordinance Committee take its uh, report, take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. On the motion. Uh, this is uh, to uh, just roll over the uh, Burnett Road uh, uh, restriction to uh, April of uh, April 1st of 2024. 
Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Councilor DeBoss. I think I'll be super brief. I know it's a long meeting. Um, Councilor uh, Shumsky, who's running unopposed for the Ward 6 term, uh, is in favor of this moratorium. Uh, and I appreciate the Ordinance Committee for allowing it to pass for another year. Uh, it doesn't stop development. It's just meant to give uh, residents an additional voice for development up there. For example, the Tesla dealership, uh, we did not stop development. We just negotiated with the uh, developer. And uh, if, if this is not passed, I think it'll, it'll just kind of uh, give Shumsky a hard time when he gets in next year. This, this will give him a few months. Uh, to, uh, to kind of get his, get his footing and, and decide if he wants to renew it or not, that it'll be up between him and the constituents. But uh, really, this is hurting the next city councilor if it's, if it's not passed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Yes. 12? Yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee be ordained by the City Council that the Code of the City of Chigwee for the year 1991 as amended being hereby further amended as follows. Delete 275-41 Home Occupation, 275-52 B11, 275-53 B12, 275-54 B1I, and insert 188-22 Home Occupation License. Councilor Krampitz. Motion that the ordinance uh, committee uh, report uh, take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained tonight. Motion that the ordinance committee report take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. On the motion, please. Essentially, uh, this deletes home occupation from under the zoning ordinances uh, and puts it really into the uh, license, uh, under the license ordinances because it makes a little more sense uh, for that to be a license issue since it's a home occupation license. So, thank, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Councilor Ballack here. No, thank you. No, I dovetailing uh, Councilor Krampus's comments. I, I concur with that thinking that it works much better in licensing rather than in zoning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee. Be it ordained by the City Council. That, oh, sorry, this is to add to the following in schedule. Meeting House Road, parking prohibited, odd side of Meeting House Road, entire length. Councilor Krampitz. Uh, motion that the Ordinance Committee report uh, be approved and take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained tonight. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report take its second and final reading be enrolled and ordained. On the motion. Uh, yes, this is... Um, uh, for to deal with a, a parking issue and uh, 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 Clerk Rattel read it into the record, but uh, it, it, uh, it it's not on my writing, but it should be odd side of Meeting House Road. So if you're looking, he read it into the record saying odd side, but um, so I just wanted to make sure that it appeared that way uh, in the ordinance. And I will defer to Councilor uh, Lopez uh, who filed. Councilor Lopez. Uh, thank you. So we are looking forward to these signs being implemented. Uh, the school has had an issue with um, parents parking along the street where there's supposed to be no parking. Um, so these, this order and the next order are just addressing um, the parking situation on Meeting House Road. I think I would like to thank uh, DPW, both Liz and John have gone out there with me and also I'd like to thank our C3 unit. Um, Sergeant Blankenship has also gone out there with me so that we could figure out the best possible solution for the parking situation. Um, and I think we have finally figured it out. So I'm looking forward to the parking signs being installed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from seeing none? Roll call. 
President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Billiton? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee to add to the following in schedule. Meeting House Road, no stopping or standing. Odd side. Councilor Krampitz. Motion that the uh, Ordinance uh, Committee report take its second and final reading and be rolled and ordained. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report be received and report taken and take its second and final reading be rolled and ordained. On the motion, please. And I just want to make sure the verbiage is um, uh, that it says the same as on the report here. South odd side from Meadow Street to a point 920 feet westerly thereof. That was recommended by engineering. No stopping or standing. Right, so you want that correction? Yes. Correct. Please. That's what we have. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments from the floor? Concha Lopez. Uh, thank you. Um, so I also failed to thank uh, engineering because they were very helpful as well. And I also want to give a shout out to Ms. Theriot, the principal at Stefanik School. They try to run a very, very uh, tight ship there. And I'd like to thank her for her willingness to allow the C3 unit to partner uh, so well with the school. And that's why changes like this happen. It, it really does take a village to make sure that we do what's right at the schools. Um, so in, in an un Marina like way and very much a Mary Beth Costello like way, I'd like to say thank you for the millionth time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Tobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. Twelve yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee to add to the following and schedule. Dorothy Street isolated stop sign. Concert Krampitz. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report take its second and final reading and be enrolled or ordained. On the uh, this order was filed by uh, Councillor Costello, and mm -hmm. as long as the verbiage uh, uh, matches what I have written down, we, we should be all set, and I'll defer to Councillor Costello. Yes. Uh, Councillor Costello. Thank you. Uh, yes, this was a, a request by a constituent <laughs> in regards to placing the stop sign for safety. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom seeing on roll call? President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dovis? Out of chair. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. <coughs> 11 yes, one out of chair. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee to add to the following in schedule. Parking prohibited here at a corner, Chapel Street. Can I have the last one that you just did? Oh. Concert Krampitz. Uh, motion that the uh, Ordinance Committee re report take a second and final reading and then we rolled and ordained. Motion that the Ordinance Committee report take its second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained on the motion. Uh, yes, the uh, committee decided to approve this, uh, and I will defer to uh, Councillor Labrie who filed the order. Councillor Labrie. Yes, uh, through the chair to Councillor Clampus, uh, were you the one who marked uh, north, uh, traveling north? Fred? Fred? I'm sorry, what was it? Oh. Were, were you the, uh, through the chair, were you, uh, did you mark north, traveling north, even side? Uh, uh, I believe that's what uh, engineering had recommended. North side, 25 feet from the intersection of York Street in both directions. Okay. Oh, yeah. They're saying north side. Okay. Not, yeah. North side, not even side. I get it. 
I'm sorry. Sorry. Yes. The yeah. Right. It's I thought, extended I thought across it was traveling. Even. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it, it's on the north side. Um, You're all set. I'm all set. And uh, just uh, oh, th three neighbors approached me on a weekend, and some new neighbors moved in and then in an apartment, and they brought with them four vehicles. Uh, one of them was a big suburban that takes up the corner spot. Uh, so people coming down York Street take a right on the church. Uh, they have no way of seeing what's coming down the street. So it was a bad situation. And so before there was an accident, uh, I tried to, uh, you know, fix it. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Concert Krampus. Yeah, I just want to make sure the clerk knows that uh, where it should uh, not only should traveling west be crossed out, but also the word even. I'm aware. Okay. He's All aware. Right. He's listening. He's still awake. <laughs> Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zooms? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report. The place on file from the Rules Committee be in order that the City of Chigabee, sorry, be in order that the City Council accept the final report completed by the Charter Review Committee and forward the same to the Rules Committee for review and formulation of recommendations for the full City Council to discuss and formal adoption. Councilor Zigorowski. Motion at the order and it's. Um, I don't know how to kind of read this, that the uh, order be received and placed on file. Motion made and second to the order be received and placed on file. On the motion. On the motion. There was a lot of discussion about our city charter. Some good. Most people uh, want to see some kind of changes on it, but I says we still got continual work to be done by the chairman and the committee. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments? Yes, I have a comment. Is it really placed on file or is it uh, referred somewhere else? Because if it's no, going to go full discussion, are we placing on file, then we're going to remove it from the file to have a full discussion? No, th I guess one, I'm a little bit confused. This one gets placed on file. Then we have an order in that uh, asks the mayor to call a special meeting. Okay. okay. It's a little further so down. So placed on file and referred to the mayor's proposed special meeting for the month of September. That's, you could write it that way, yes. Say it, yes. Okay. Any other comments? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Sure. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. yes. Vinny and Costello. Yes. Well, yes. And the motion passes. Okay. We have a favorable report from the Rules Committee via order that the City Council meet to discuss the open meeting law complaint filed by Lisa Vieveno on June 20th, 2023. Councilor Zigorowski. Uh, motion that the order be received, and I'm going to refer to our attorney to respond to this. Council. So, uh, Mr. President, um, it's our opinion that this, this has already been done. The Rules Committee actually met because the, the alleged violation happened in Rules Committee. So the council doesn't have to approve anything. Uh, my suggestion is to place it on file because the, and the, the two items have already been completed. Correct. So, Bob, if you can make the motion to place it on file. Motion to place it on file. Motion made in second to place the item on file. On the motion. You just heard it. Councillor Bellicker, did you want to, did you have your hand up? No? Okay, I'm sorry. No, Any good. other comments on this one? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny Costello? Yes. 
Vote yes. And the motion passes, and we're halfway there. What did you mark me as, Mr. Clerk? I drew as a yes. Okay. I'm an answer, but sure, I'll take it. You're all set, Keith. Thank you. Yeah, your microphone's been going in and out all night. I don't know if it's, there's a short in it, but I had you as a yes. Okay, thank you. This one's off. She has two mics she's trying. She has two. Yeah. I turned one yes. off. For some reason, hers and, and Piniac Costello's been a little weak no, tonight. I don't know if they, uh, maybe if IT can turn them up or something. But we're getting through it. Thank we have you. a favorable report from the license committee for an application for an alteration of a class two and auto repair license, adding LLC to the name from A and M Auto Repair to A and M Auto Sales and Repair LLC at 451 Granby Road. Concer Brooks. We're actually going to defer items 43, 44, 45, and 50 to Councilor Krampitz. That that was the meeting I was on vacation. I'll pick it back up at 51. Thank you, Councilor Krampitz. Motion that the license committee report be received and the uh, name on the license uh, be uh, updated. Motion made a second that the license committee report be received and the license uh, name be up upgraded on the motion. Uh, yes, this was uh, an application from... Uh, changed. The, changed. Uh, this was an application uh, from the applicant saying that they had basically upgraded to an LLC. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Flam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Billiton? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Abstain. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 11 yes, one abstention. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the license committee for an application for a name change and a junk dealer license from New to You to Rodriguez Wood Projects and more. 922 Chigabee Street. Concert Krampitz. Motion that the license committee report be received and the name change approved and granted this evening. Motion made in second that the favorable license committee report be received and a name change granted this evening on the motion. Yeah, he uh, it's still the same person, but uh, he changed the name so it would be a little more specific to what he was uh, doing. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Councilor Lopez. I just want to say that this is, um, I approve of this name change because new to you is a very confusing name and it irks my grammatical uh, brain here. So thank you for this name change. I'm sure he appreciates it. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Flam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Or Payne, rather. Sorry. Got it. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 11 yes, one and abstention. And a motion passes, 50. We have a favorable report from the License Committee for an application for a hawker and peddler's license to sell ice cream at various locations. Concert Brooks. Oh, no, Concert Krampus will do this one. Uh, motion that the license committee report be received and motion to postpone to the next license committee meeting. Motion made to the license committee report be received and postponed to the, the next call, license committee yeah, meeting. Call, the next On the motion. Yeah, I mean, realistically, I think ice cream season's probably passed or going to be passed by the time we have our meeting, but we'll take it up and commit. Thank it. you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any I just have a question, Mr. President. Sure, go ahead. Um, so all of these that are being postponed to the next license committee meeting, I don't see an exact date, and I just want to verify to make sure that it's okay for us to be postponing without an exact date. Well, we, we advertise it, so we're... Po so I know for zoning, we're, we have to make sure that we include no, the date and time. Um, otherwise, it just has to be to the call of the chair, but if we're postponing to the next meeting, it has to be an exact date and time. And so I've seen it over and over, and I just want to make sure that we're doing it properly. So, so 
I thought honestly, I thought we were passing these. These are all going. To, these are all Just reports this one here, that we're passing. Like the, the talking about fifty. It's happened a few times, yeah, but 50, 48, 50, You know, there, it's happened a few times where it's just motion to postpone to the next license committee meeting, but there's no like specific date, time, address. I'm, I'm not sure we have it. So forty-eight says it's a it's a license committee report, so it's a favorable report. So is that being postponed or is that just? No, we're being all approved? done with forty. We're talking about number fifty. Was she spring? Oh, you skipped forty-eight. We're talking about fifty right at this moment. Yeah, but we don't. Oh, they don't set the date yet. A point of information, uh, our last attorney, Dan Garvey, insisted that we write time, date, location on all orders that are postponed to a specific, you know, to the next meeting. I can change it to postpone the call. I mean, literally, the address, the change time, the floor, He's everything. He's going to postpone it to the call of the chair. Yeah. I'll, I'll change it, postpone the call of the chair, so that way it's... Yeah, that way you don't have to have the date, but if we do it to the next meeting, we have to have a date. Right. So if I could just say one more thing. Uh, with regards to Councillor Lopez's comments, with special permits, you have to be specific because they only have 90 days. Right. right. So when the licenses, I don't believe that's the same. So I think what you're proposing is call fine. Call the chair. Okay. Call, call the chair. I'll change it to a uh, motion to postpone the call of the motion chair. Motion made and second to take um, item 15 to the call of the chair, just for reference. On the motion again, you're all set? Roll call, please. Oh, wait a minute. Is anyone on Zoom? Roll call. President Lafleur. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. Brooks. Abstain. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Rampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Shane. Yes. Abreed. Yes. Vinny and Costello. Yes. Eleven yes, one abstention. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report with a motion to postpone for an application for a junk dealer's license for something odd, something new, 1410 Memorial Drive, for the purpose of selling vintage articles, new crafts, and consignment shop. Councillor Brooks, you want it? I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, Councillor Krampitz, I was on vacation at the meeting. Okay, you were. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, Motion that the license committee re report be received and motion to postpone to the call of the chair. Motion made and second that the license committee report be received and postponed to the call of the chair on the motion. Yeah, the applicant uh, did not show up, so we'll. Thank you. Any other it. comments from the floor? Council Lopez. Just as a point of correction, it's something old, not something odd, but perhaps there are odd things. Something old, something new. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? <clears throat> Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Abstain. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Cushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny Costello. Yes. 11 yes, one abstention. Motion passes. Okay. With an application for a junk dealer's license at 720 Memorial Drive, applicant prestige dance and sports consignment. A favorable report. Councilor Krampitz. No, oh, this would be Councilor Brooks. Oh, okay, I'll get this one to Councilor Brooks. <laughs> A motion that the uh, Fairwell License Committee report be received and granted with restrictions. Motion made and second that the License Committee report be received and approved this evening with restrictions. On the motion. On the motion, uh, she's actually taking a vacant building on Memorial Drive that was formerly a, a nail salon and she's going to be renting the space to create a consignment shop for uh, secondhand uh, clothing for like gymnastics and other dance classes. Uh, her hours of operation will be Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 6. She likely won't utilize all of those hours, um, but this will allow her to go in uh, on prescriptive days and do paperwork. Uh, she will be closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, prior to the issuance of a license, she point to bring a signed lease on a parking plan and drop that off at the clerk's office um, before we actually allow her to pick up her license. Thank you very much. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. 
Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Jim? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Bouchain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Okay, we have a favorable report with a motion of place on file from the Public Safety Committee be it ordered that the issue of Marion Excavating Company involving cease and desist be referred to the Public Safety Committee for public hearing. Councillor Zigorowski. Motion that the order be received and placed on file. Motion made a second that the Public Safety Committee report be received and placed on file on the motion. And, at, and on the motion, at the public safety meeting, I was instructed by our attorney that we really can't discuss this because it is in litigation. So that's the way I'll, I'll leave it, why it was placed on file. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Yeah. Dr. Costello. Even though um, there wasn't any discussion, there was public input and many individuals from the public in regards to this particular issue were present at that meeting and did speak in regards to their concerns on the excavation. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Trampets? Yes. Lobus? Yes. Bouchain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finan Costello? Yes. Well, yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report with a motion to place on file from the Public Safety Committee be it ordered that a Public Safety Committee Meeting be held to discuss Morro Drive and the surrounding streets, residents' concerns, invite the DPW, police, fire, building, and health departments. Councilor Zagorowski. Motion that the order be received and placed on file. Motion made and second that the Public Safety Committee report be received and placed on file. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, uh, this order was filed by our president, uh, Mr. LaFlamme, if he chose to, to speak on it, or I can voice it also. No, just go with it. All right. Speaking to uh, the attendance at this meeting, it was a result of evidently there was a neighborhood meeting, so some people couldn't attend my public safety meeting at that point. So I rescheduled it at the request of uh, our president, Frank LaFlamme. And there was one person that was there from this street, uh, Morno Drive. They've got some issues there, and some of the things they talked about uh, was uh, this is why we placed on file because. I believe that the councilman from that ward, Derek Dobaz, was made well aware of it, even though he didn't attend it, he was there on Zoom. I believe he was on Zoom, right? Yeah, Zoom. It's not marked here, but it was. And, you know, we discussed uh, speed tables, bus problems, drivers going through stop signs, lighted stop signs. Uh, it's going to be delivered in a couple of weeks per our DPW superintendent. Also, we go slow children. So some of the, some of the items were addressed. And I, I think that uh, at this point, I think this is about the third time we discussed this street. And I believe our uh, Ward 6 Councilman, Derek Rose Dobez, is well aware of these items, and he will be monitoring these things. Thank you. Councilor Dobez. Uh, thank you for hosting the meeting. Thank you to the councilors at large for, uh, uh, for working on this issue. I appreciate it a lot, and uh, I know the residents uh, appreciate it as well. Even though there was low attendance, uh, people knew about the meeting and they, they watched it and they contacted their department heads. So uh, thank you for hosting the meeting. And uh, I'm, you know, some residents are looking forward to some of the changes the department heads uh, want to try out. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President O'Flam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes.
We have a favorable report from the Human Resource Committee from the mayoral appointment of Anthony Gallant as a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, Councilor Libri. Uh, motion to uh, appoint Anthony Gallant to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, to serve at such office for a term expired on the 1st of April, 2026. Um, motion, made in, motion made in second to approve the Human Resources Committee report. On the motion. On the motion, uh, Mr. Gallant came in. Um, he had been on the committee for 15 years and he gave us a synopsis of what he's been doing on the board. He worked his way up to chairman. He got his law degree while he was uh, working on that board. So uh, he had some interesting stories and, and things. So it was a pleasure to, to meet him. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Councilor Del Bas. I Just real quick, I'm just going to speak in favor of his appointment. Uh, he was a pleasure to work with when I was on the board, and he is an attorney. Uh, and I think we're, uh, we're fortunate to have him on uh, serving. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Costello. Yes, I, uh, I agree with Councilor Labrie and Councilor Dobas. Uh, this gentleman is a very impressive candidate. And I'm well, a candidate, but he has served 15 years. He's dedicated. And uh, I want to thank him for his service and his commitment to continue to serve. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampus? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. Well, yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Human Resource Com Committee of the appointment of Yadria Medina as a member of the Housing Authority. Uh, like Councilor Labrie. I'd like to make a motion uh, to postpone this one to the call of the chair. Motion made and second to postpone the Human Resources Committee report to the call of the chair. On a motion. Uh, yeah, she did not show up that evening. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? <laughs> Seeing none, roll call. President Laflam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valskier? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Shane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinhead Costello? Yes. Twelve yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report of the motion to postpone from the Human Resource Committee for the appointment of Audrey Monroe as member of the Council on Aging. Concert. Labrie. Uh, motion to postpone to the call of the chair. Motion made second that the Human Resources Committee report be received and postponed to the call of the chair. On the motion. Uh, this candidate also did not show up this evening. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Yes. Roy? Yes. Phillipson? Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny Costello? Yes. 12 yes. Motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under 275-58C5 for the purpose of two apartments on the second floor of a business building located at 873 Grand Street. Concept Ballack here. Motion made to receive and approve the special permit application for the purpose of two apartments on the second floor of a business <coughs> building located at 873 Granton Street. Motion made and second that the Zoning Committee report be special permit application be received and approved this evening. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, uh, this is a uh, permit to run with the land. This is the uh, Pension Press Building. And uh, my motion is to approve the special permit application for the purpose of two apartments on the second floor of a business building located at 873 Granton Street in compliance with all city, fire, and building codes 
and there's the condition um, they need to submit fire detection alarm systems as a code review regarding the subject property. This is a very tight piece of property <coughs> and the um, fire report referenced that they didn't have proper turning radius in there. So we put that condition. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Labrie. Uh, yes, I just want to go on record. Uh, these applicants have the same last name in, as, as I do, uh, although we are not related. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Thelvis? Uh, yes. Hussein? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finan Costello? Yes. Valvias? And the motion passes. Or that the mayor schedule a special city council meeting in September 2023 to allow the city council to move forward with the proposed city charter changes. Councilor Bree. Um, motion to send a letter to the mayor uh, to request a special meeting on the proposed city charter changes. Motion made in second that we, we send the a letter to the mayor asking for a special city council meeting in September 2000 to allow the city council to move forward with the proposed city charter change on the motion. On the motion, uh, the, uh, yeah, the committee uh, uh, made some changes and we'd like to have uh, special meetings to discuss them. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dobas? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Benny Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. Be in order that the City Council meeting scheduled for Thursday, September 21st, 2023, be moved back to Tuesday, September 19th, 2023, since there is no city preliminary scheduled for that date. Councilor Bree. Motion to change the meeting to September Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. Motion made in second to uh, transfer the back to City Council meeting to September Thursday, from September 21st to, I'm sorry, to September 19th, uh, 2023. On the motion. On the motion, uh, there's no city primary uh, we were saving that date in case there was a primary, but seeing that there's no primary, we'd like to move it back to the Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Councilor Lopez. Um, I, just as a point of information that this may be for another year, um, but I, this, when we reset meetings, we set our schedules around meetings, right? And so I, I know for myself, at least, I had set my schedule and other things around us having now a meeting on September 21st. So to now change it on short notice, despite the fact that we had already changed it back, is a little inconvenient. Um, I, I'm gonna have to zoom into this meeting. I'm gonna be out of town for a conference now and I'm, and I'm fine doing that, but just maybe perhaps if we change a meeting, we should probably stick to the now changed date because we had done it with anticipation before, but now it's not real that, anticipation. Just so you know, that's how they used to go back if we could because people don't really see our meetings at this meeting a lot to see this being changed to a Thursday. So they're probably gonna zoom in on a Tuesday that didn't know that we were changing. So that's the only reason I went back. Yeah. But we'll look at it. We'll look at it and think about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? <coughs> Roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Billington? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? No. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampage? No. Dobas? No. <laughs> no. 
Kushane? Yes. Kushane? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinhead Costello? Yes. Pinhead Costello? Yes. This back to Lopez. What did, I, what did you have, Lopez? Sorry. I had no. All right, so we have nine yes, three no. And a motion passes. We had ordered that the DPW install a dead end sign by approximately 1586 Donahue Road by Contiki Circle. Councilor Zigorowski? A motion that the order be received and sent to the DPW for implementation. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the DBW for installation. On the motion. Yeah, this is a result of a conversation that I've had with uh, Councilman Dobez, and we both uh, came to an agreement that this was the best way to, to handle this. What uh, evidently is happening, tractor trailer trucks are parking on city property. So I, I've also consulted with our of DBW superintendent and our engineer, and this was the best way to handle it at the end of Donio Road, put a dead end sign. Okay. Any other comments? Councilor uh, I just want to thank Councilor Zigorowski for, uh, for doing the work on this. And, uh, you know, I got, we got this phone call when I was on vacation, so I appreciate Councilor Zigorowski taking care of it. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from the floor? Any, Council Lopez. I think that's a, an iteration of if you see something, say something. Good job, Councilor Zagorowski. <laughs> I'm not sure this one's going to. Uh, any other comments from Zoom? Roll call. President Flam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Rampage? Yes. Dobas? Yes. Cushane? Yes, yes, yes. Bree? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. Bob, yes. And the motion passes. We are order that the City Council send a letter to the Planning Board requesting that a drive through be located 50 feet from. Residential zone property. Uh, this is Councilor Dobas or a motion to withdraw the order. <coughs> motion made and second to withdraw the order. On the uh, motion. On, on the motion, uh, according to our uh, attorney, um, the city council does not have the authority to uh, change um, site plan regulations. Only the planning board can, uh, and so we'll withdraw it and we'll come up with a different a different way to uh, try to achieve our end result. Uh, which uh, I can't speak for Cast Councilor Costello, but uh, you know, I, I believe that residents in the city council should have more of a say about uh, drive throughs and drive through developments. Uh, you know, some drive throughs are, are done really well, like Chick fil A, and some have done really poorly, like the, uh, the now closed um, Dairy Queen. So uh, hopeful, I'm hopeful that uh, we can change uh, the, the laws a little bit to, uh, to make it a little bit stricter to approve a drive through. That's my goal. I don't know if the council agrees. Uh, and uh, I'll let Councillor Costello speak on it, but uh, according to our attorney, this is not the correct way to, uh, to go about it, so I'm going to withdraw this time. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Costello. Yes. What we've learned recently is that the drive throughs have become a major problem in some neighborhoods. Uh, they're too close to the residents. We heard a woman today come in on public input concerned about drive throughs mm -hmm. So that's why Councillor Dobas and I discussed trying to make drive-throughs more neighborhood friendly, more friendly toward the residents that have to live near a drive-through. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're talking about this and we want to make sure the wording is correct. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President Flam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Fabri? Yes. 
Vinnie and Costello. Yes. Well, yes. And a motion pass. In order that the Education Committee meet to discuss traffic, school bus safety, enrollment, and playground equipment at Bowie School. Councilor Costello. Yes, this is in regards to scheduling an education subcommittee. Um, so this motion is to have an education subcommittee set up to discuss the traffic, school bus safety, enrollment, and playground equipment at Bowie School. Motion, motion made and second to send it to the Education Committee for discussion. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President McClain. Yes. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. Brooks. Yes. yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyrie. Yes. Rampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. <clears throat> well, yes. Motion passes. Be in order that Maple Avenue be accepted as a city street for referral to the DPW and Law Department. Councilor Costello? Yeah, motion that the order be received and that Maple Avenue be accepted as a city street and the referral to the DPW and to the Law Department. But I also want to amend this okay. to include the Public Works Committee. I think Councillor um, uh, Krampitz did schedule a meeting for the Public Works Committee. I believe it's what, September 18th? 18th. Yes. So I talked with Attorney Riley. He said there would be two motions. One motion would be to amend to include Public Works, and the other one would be to have it as this, the motion that has been stated. Okay, M motion made in second that the Maple Street Avenue be accepted as a city street for referral to the DBW and Law Department. Roll right. call. Motion to amend first. <clears throat> well, we gotta call the amendment first. So our amendment was to send uh, to where? To Public Works. Correct, to Public Works. Thank you. Public oh, Works. Committee. So on the, uh, so Frank, you, can you second the amendment? Motion made in I, motion made in second that the amendment be referred for the public works committee. That's correct on okay on September eighteenth. Okay, so on the amendment, uh, President Laflam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Yes. Phillips. Yes. Zagrowski. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Alkier. Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. <laughs> Don't blame him. And on the well, motion? Yes. Now on the order. And the motion is approved. Maple Avenue be accepted as a city street for referral to the DPW and Law Department. And motion, Public Works. Motion made in second to the order that the Maple Avenue be accepted as a city street for referral to the DPW and Law Department on the motion. No, that's not the motion. The public the mo works and public hearing. And public works? For and hearing. public works. Public hearing, yes. For a public hearing. hearing on a motion. Lopez. Lopez. You want to talk about it? Are you all set? No, we're all set. Okay. Roll call, please. President Lopez. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Alkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. Well, yes. And the motion passes. Be in order that the health department and the law department establish a used needle disposal in Co Fairview. Consa Costello. Yes, motion that the Health Department and the Law Department establish a used needle disposal in the Fairview section. Motion made in second that the Health Department and Law Department establish a used needle disposal in Fairview section on the motion. Yes, this is a used needle uh, request because some residents in Fairview find it difficult to go down to the senior center for needle disposal. Those people might have diabetes and other diseases that require injections. 
So this is a medical issue. A constituent asked me to do it because driving down to the senior center for those disposals mm -hmm. is very, very difficult. So I'm asking if you would consider, you know, referring that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Look at, look at the whole city on that issue. I don't think it should be applied in, in Ward 9. I think we got issues of that nature all over the city. I think we ought to broaden it. I, I'd like to amend it uh, and, and have, have the whole city look back so that uh, we will have the same kind of people throughout the whole city. So you want to make an amendment to that to include the whole city? Yeah. I didn't hear what he said. He said yes. Yes. Okay. Before we do that, we'll continue with the discussion, then we'll make your your um, the request. Councilor uh, Lopez. Uh, thank you. I, I just have a question through the chair to the law department. How does this, I, I'm trying to understand this order and, and how it actually should be worded. Um, we Since we have a needle exchange program, I, I, Lisa uh, actually spoke about this recently to to me and a couple other residents. Um, how can we just establish by using the existing needle needle exchange program a different location? Because I, I don't necessarily think we need to have an order that like establishes something that already exists, right? So like, how do we already use the existing needle exchange program in a way that will satisfy this new location in Fairview? Mr. President, uh, Council Lopez, I'm not sure how to do that. I think we'd have to discuss that with Lisa Sanders to see whether that, because I'm not sure if it's a state-funded program or it's a city-funded program. I really know very little about it. So um, I think we'd have to talk to Lisa and say, do we need, what does she need to expand the program? Yeah. So then that, that goes back to uh, the, the way this is written, to establish a used needle disposal. I, I, I don't think that that makes sense. Perhaps this is like a, maybe we just withdraw this and you have a conversation with Lisa and figure out like what already exists and how we can perhaps expand that in Fairview and then either just have a conversation and have Lisa work on it or propose a different order. But this order saying to establish doesn't really make sense when we already have a needle exchange program. Okay, Councilor uh, uh, Shane. Hold on, may. hold on, Shane. Okay. Ho Shane, hold on, I'll sure. get right to you. Go ahead, 2018, Council. I actually uh, put an order in for the needle exchange program. Uh, 2019, I believe, is when it finally got off the ground. It's a state-funded program. So luckily for us, the Health Commission took it over, um, and it was state-funded. It took a little while. It took about a year to get going. Uh, it was supposed to be a mobile uh, needle exchange program, yeah. uh, but I believe it's coming out of the Chickabee Medical Center on Front Street right now. Um, but it is state-funded. Um, at least it was in the beginning, uh, which was great for the taxpayers because we didn't have to fund anything. Uh, and it includes all needles. It's not just IV users. It's IV users of legal and illegal drugs. <coughs> Anybody with a needle can go there and exchange one and get one, uh, which helps a lot of the elderly people with the cost of needles. Uh, but it already exists. Um, it's been existed for quite a while now. Um, so maybe we can look into uh, creating the mobile one as it was supposed to be originally, um, and that would help out uh, Mary Beth Costello with her request. And, you know, most people, uh, especially IV drug users, unfortunately, they're not necessarily going to be able to get to a place down on Front Street if they're wherever they are in the city. So to protect our residents um, and to help those people out when they're uh, working on getting better, uh, we need to be mobile, actually. Thank you. Councillor Brooks. I was going to say, I mean, there's a qualitative difference between a needle exchange and a sharps container for disposal. So, I mean, if you want to make it equitable to Jim's point around the city, all you got to do is, is order sharps containers and put them at every fire department. I mean, some people just want to dispose of needles, whether it be diabetic testing strips or needles, they go right in a sharps container that you can no longer retrieve them. And, you know, needle exchange doesn't always apply for those legal drugs, like people who are taking injections for diabetes and other illnesses, they may just want to dispose of the needles rather than having them around their house. Now, a needle exchange in a true sense is, all right, you're going to give me a needle. If you're a drug user, we're going to give you a clean needle so you're not potentially spreading any additional disease throughout the community. So I think I think there's really, you know, we need to have more discussion because there are, there are two kind of distinct paths in which people dispose of needles. Um, one is the traditional sharps container where diabetic needles might be disposed of because people don't want to put them in their trash and, you know, 
God forbid somebody get a finger stick. And then there's the more, I guess, heightened awareness of a, need, a true needle exchange program, as Councillor Crashane alluded to, where you know there are intervenient drug users who are coming to get a clean needle because they're not likely to stop the behavior in which they're currently practicing. So I, th I think it does need a little bit more discussion because I think there's an easier way to get more containers out there. And I think we don't need to make it any more difficult than it already probably is. And it, I think it also eliminates the need for people to try to, oh, I got to get the front street, I got to get the front street. Well, if a fire department has a sharps container where they can just go dispose of their dirty needle, kind of alleviates problem and it's very minimal cost to the taxpayers. The sharps containers are like 15 bucks a piece. You can get them at any medical store and then in the medical store actually comes back and unlocks them and grabs the needles from them so they're reusable. So I, I just th I think there's an additional conversation that needs to be had. Thank you. Councilor uh, Cushane, second time. Yeah, just point of information, it includes all IV users, legal and illegal. So anybody with insulin or whatever, if you show up with a needle, they give you a needle. It doesn't matter what you're using it for. Um, so which is a benefit to everybody in the city. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Zigorowski, first time. One conversation, I, I, I agree with uh, Ms. Costello and what she's trying to do, but I think this, this program should be handled by the health department. That's number one. And number two, the police department has right in their lobby a place that you can drop off needles. They do do that. I was in the station last week and I saw it. And you can drop off needles there. And like Councilman Cushane said, right, the medical center on um, Front Street also has it. So I think the health department handling this would be the proper way. I believe so. Councilman Lopez. Uh, so, so then it's my recommendation still stands that I do believe that the proper recourse would be to withdraw this because it's we're not establishing a used needle disposal. We're just expanding what already exists and maybe looking into some more options. But this is definitely a conversation that's warranted with uh, the health department director, Lisa. Um, and then perhaps after you come up with a solution, you file an order if, if necessary. Constance, uh, Costello, what is your wish? Well, right now, my, my objective here is that if it's a senior center, I mean a senior citizen, and they have diabetes, and they want to get rid of the needle safely, they don't want to put it in the trash, then where do we go? If you're in Fairview, are you going to go down to the police station? Are you going to go down the senior center? That's a long way. That's a long way for some seniors to go. So I just want direction in regards to helping these people dispose of their needles. Do you want to, um, and it's just a suggestion, would you like to have a conversation with Lisa tomorrow and ask, tell her that the thoughts of everybody here. Can we just continue this particular um, issue until the next meeting? Then tomorrow I can talk with uh, health you can, director. You can, instead of just saying, just come in with a new one. If you're right. going okay, to wait so till the next meeting, you might as well po post, uh, remove it, defeat it tonight, because and put whatever your new idea is on a new one, and we'll work from there. From I, I appreciate um, Councillor Zigorowski because he understands where I'm going with this. Okay. To help senior citizens that live way out of the way to yeah. where they can go. So I'll make a motion to withdraw. Okay. And then I'll talk with Lisa Sanders in regards to getting it more localized. And I agree with um, Councillor Brooks. You know, this should be a, a citywide thing as well because all neighborhoods have difficulties. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The motion is uh, to withdraw uh, item number, which see, what number was that one? I'm sorry. Six. Uh, item number 66. Um, roll, call, um, roll call, please. To, to, yeah, roll call. We were all done, right? Everybody else done talking? Did I go through everybody? Anybody on Zoom? Nobody? Roll call to withdraw. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Alkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobish. Yes. Hussein. Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. 12, yes. And the motion passes. Be in order that the DPW install a slow children's sign at 55 Lukasic Street. Councilor Costello? Yes, motion to install a slow children's sign at 55 Lukasic Street. This was a request made by the constituent. 
Motion made and second to order that the DBW install a slow children's sign at 55 Lukasik Street. On the motion. This is a request by a constituent in regards to his grandchildren in the area. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other comments from the floor? If I'd like, I'd like to speak on this one for real quick, if I could. <laughs> It'll be real quick because I just want to allow the president to speak. Thank you. Roll call, please. Roll call. I don't want to see it. Just go into the closet. I want. Jim, can you mute your? Jim, mute your phone, please. Thank you. He made a motion. Roll call, please. Keith. President of Plan. Abstain. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Uh, yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Grampets? Yes. Dobus? Yes. Bouchain? Yes. Fabri? Yes. Vinny Costello? Yes. Thank you. The only reason I wanted to say something, I, I, when I saw this, I spoke to the DBW, and that's the one we're going to be tearing up the street, and they had a conversation with that, that uh, neighbor. Okay. And he's okay with not having it temporarily because okay. they're going to be tearing it down. Correct, John? Thank you. Okay, thank you. So thank then you. I'll make a motion at this point to withdraw this. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Motion to, she made a motion to withdraw it. Roll call, please. Point of information. What are we, what are we withdrawing? She's withdrawing her order. That's it. Simple thing on number 66. Is, uh, I, I mean, 67, she's withdrawing it. That's all. So we're not going to deal with the drug issue. Correct. She's not going to do move forward with it right at the moment. Roll call, please. Okay. As long as we get something that works, that's fine. Roll call, please. Okay. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagrowski. Yes. <clears throat> Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. 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 Valkyr. Yes. Grampus. Yes. Elvis. Yes. Duchesne. Yes. Bree. Yes. Vinny Costello. Yes. Twelve yes. Motion passes. Or that the law department and the parks department provide the status of a tree on 245 Mount Pump Street. Councilor Costello. Yes, this is my motion to have the law department and the park department provide the status of a tree on 245 Mount Pump Street. Motion made in second the order that the law department and parks department provide the status of a tree on 2 245 Mount Pump. Street. Yeah, this motion. is uh, this is at the request of a resident as well. The tree seems to be in the park area, but as it's growing, it's growing into the person's personal property that involves their fence. So I'm concerned about where do we go from here on this. Um, it's on city property. We've already verified that, but some of it is also growing into the fence of the person that lives next to the park. And okay, it's a big so, tree. So we're gonna send it to the law department. Yes, please. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagrowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. <laughs> Lopez? Yes. Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampits? Yes. Novus? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finance Costello? Yes. Well, yes. Motion passes. Be in order that a dead end street sign at the intersection of Royal Street and Britain Street be referred to the DPW for review and possible installation. Councilor Costello. Yes, motion that the dead end street sign be installed at the intersection of Royal Street and Britain Street be referred to the DPW for possible installation. Order. Um, that's been referred on this by myself and by Councilor Laflamme. 
we have gone let me, to let yeah. me second it yeah order that the dead end uh, street sign at the intersection of royal and britain street be referred to the dpw for review and possible installation uh, on the motion yes councillor flam and i went to a site visit on royal street um, for another issue but we did indicate that there could be an issue with um, not having a dead end street sign at the beginning of Royal Street. And I appreciate Councillor Flam coming out and discussing the issues on Royal Street for this particular constituent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. No, Councillor Flam, I just have one comment. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see yours green. Go ahead. No, that's fine. You're gonna to have to delineate what's, what intersection of uh, Britain and Royal Street. Royal Street goes across Britain Street. So I know where you're talking about. You're talking about if you're going down, it's going to be on your right-hand side. That is the dead end where the water tower is. But right. I don't want the DPW installing it on the wrong side because the other side of Britain Street, that is also Royal Street. Yes, thank you. That's yeah, that's great. why we're, re and, we're reviewing and, it. And the only know. reason I know that is because guess what? There's group homes on that street. Okay. Okay. So do you want me to be specific? I think you should be just to make sure that they install it in the right spots and don't have to do the work twice. Okay. Yeah. At the moment, it's just review, no installation. We'll have to come back for that. Okay. This is just to review it. So if it's wrong, we'll correct it on the, on the site with her. Okay. Is that all right with you, Kate, uh, Shane? Because this is. Uh, Fine by me. I just know there's two sides of Royal Street and one isn't a dead end. That's all. That's correct. That goes all the way to the end. Actually, this would be on the south side. Yeah. The south side of the street. So you right want to correct it to say the south side? Yeah. 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 So south side. he wants to correct it to say the south side. Is that okay? Yep. She, okay. Uh, Keith, do we have to do a roll call for the south side? Can we just fix it at committee? Then? Well, she can do it all in one or in one motion. She re rephrases her motion. Okay. Motion Rephrase. that the dead end street sign at the intersection of Royal Street and Britain Street. And this would be on the south side of the Britain Street, Royal Street intersection. Be referred to the DPW for review and possible installation. Order that the dead end street sign intersection. Motion and second that the intersection of Royal Street and Britain Street on the south side be referred to the for review and possible installation. On the motion, we're all set. Roll all call. Set. Roll call, please. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. 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 Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Hussein? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. All oh, yes. And a motion passes. Be in order that a stop sign be installed on Manning Street at the intersection of Dorothy Avenue and Manning Street. This order is to be sent to the DPW and to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. Councilor Costello. Yes, this is a, um, a, a request by a constituent to put a stop sign on Manning Street at the intersection of Dorothy mm -hmm. Avenue and Manning. Thank you. If I can ask a question, this was um, already in front of us and it was withdrawn on 523. Yeah, I know that. Okay. But then, but, but the difference is oh, that we're, we're just saying specifically put the stop sign okay. on Manning Street. We'll send it to ordinance. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to verify yeah. that. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President of the plan. Yes. Roy? Yes. Dillinson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Thobus? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Debris? Yes. Penny yes. Costello? Yes. Well, yes. Motion passes. Yeah. 
Be in order that the DPW install a no truck sign for Ludlow Road and be referred to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. Councilor Costello. Yes, motion that the DPW install a no truck sign for Ludlow Road and be referred to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the DPW for installation of a no truck sign and be referred to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. Not a motion. Uh, this is a, um, a request made by myself and President Laflamme. He also did a site visit on this street and he feels this is a good way to handle this type of request. So I appreciate his input in regards to this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. Bob, yes? Motion passes. Be in order that the DPW install a no truck sign for Ludlow Road and be referred to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. You just did that one. <laughs> Sorry. Long night. Okay. Be in order that no recording of conversations be made without the knowledge and consent of the person being recorded. This would apply to the city ordinance for rude and disorderly conduct, 24, sorry, 243-30. The order is to be sent to the law department for review. Councilor Costello. I'm asking uh, on this particular motion to withdraw it. I talked with Attorney Riley, and we're going to withdraw it at this time. Motion made and second to withdraw this this evening. On the motion, you're all set? That's, I'm all set. Roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Bouchain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinnie Costello? Yes. Well, yes. And a motion passes. That the Recreation Committee meet to discuss the expansion of pickleball in the city of Chicopee. Labrie? Yeah, motion uh, that the Recreation Committee meet to discuss the expansion of pickleball in the city of Chicopee. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the Recreation Committee to discuss the expansion of pickleball. On a motion. On a motion, I talked to the mayor and uh, they're working on something, but uh, I'd just like to get an update on that. And also, it goes with the next order of Garrity Grove. Uh, which Thank would be a good spot. Thank you. On, we're still on 73, and we're not on the next one. 73. Councillor uh, Balakir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Now, I've had some people approach me about trying to do something with Zot Park, dedicating a court or two for pickleball, because it seems that this is a topic that nationwide that people are very interested in. However, um, there's also discussion whereby some of the noise that happens by people playing the sport, it's uh, really kind of uh, troublesome to neighborhoods. But I'd be, I'd be interested to see where this goes. I'm in favor of expanding it. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments? Councilor Cushane. I'm happy to see this one come forward. Uh, before I was on the council, I was on the Parks Commission, and I brought this up uh, to be done in the city 2003. 14 maybe um, and it was shot down um, really quickly <laughs> by everybody but it's nice to see you know I knew it was coming eventually because I've had friends in Florida where they're doing that for decades now um, but uh, so it's nice to see it finally coming back to life and hopefully uh, we'll establish it and get our seniors out there and get them moving get them feeling good and you know it's not just a young man's sport it's a Franklin Flam type of sport you know <laughs> <laughs> okay um, Council Lopez Ooh, that's going to be a tough one to follow. Um, I mean, a different level of senior, right? When I was a senior in high school, I was a reigning pickleball champ, so I'll take that. But 
Um, I, I am happy to see this. I, I, I understand people's concerns regarding like noise levels in neighborhoods. However, parks are usually closed at sundown anyway. So, you know, you, that's noise level, that's during the day. Um, it's enforced. It, yeah, I mean, we, we would hope that that's enforced, that we have mechanisms to enforce that. So uh, I, I don't really see an issue with the noise. Um, and even when it's after sundown, right, when we have like sporting events for like our high school teams and stuff, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of noise that's allowable and then we have enforcement and people make their way out. So I don't really see an issue with this and I, I'm happy to give folks another opportunity to get active, get outside, uh, do things and it also builds community because folks come out and play together. So I'm happy Thank to see you. this. We'll take the rest up in committee. Roll call please. Maybe. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Bouchain? Yes. Fabri? Yes. Vinian Costello? Yes. 12 yes. yes. Motion passes. Be in order that the Recreation Committee meet to discuss Garrity Grove Park. Councilor Labri. A motion that the uh, Recreation Committee meet to discuss Garrity Grove Park. Motion made and seconded that the Recreation Committee meet with to discuss Garrity Grove Park. On the motion. Yeah, the uh, park is, you know, it, it's in limbo right now because the school might go there. So I just want to get an update. <coughs> and, uh, you know, that perhaps is a good pickleball spot. But. Uh, we have two tennis courts that are haven't been utilized in you know six to eight years, um, so it might be a good spot. But we'll take it up in committee. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none. Roll call. President Flam. Hold on. I'm sorry, Councilor Zigarowski. Comment on that Garrity Grove. I I took a tour with the uh, Councilman Liberty the other day, and you know it's about time that the uh, they do something about the trees in there because the kids are playing in there. They got a lot of bad trees that need to be cut down. So I hope this word gets better. We'll take it up in recreation committee meeting. Recreation, right. Thank you. Okay, thank Any you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. <laughs> Tillotson. Yeah. Zagorowski. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampage? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinay Costello? Yes. 12 yes. Motion passes. Be in order that the DPW replace the current 30 mile per hour speed limit sign with 25 mile per hour as per city ordinance on Irene Street. Councilor Cushane. Motion that the order be received and sent to the DPW for implementation. Oh. Motion made and seconded that the order be received, sent to the DPW for installation. On the motion. On the motion. So um, there's right now it's posted 30 miles per hour at the. We only have two signs, one at each entrance of the street, um, and it's uh, 25 by Paul, or by our ordinance. Thank you. I guess we could, if they want to increase it, they can reach out to me and I can change the order. Right. Ordinance. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none. Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? <coughs> yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Novus? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinian Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Be in order that the DPW install rumble strips on Irene Street at the intersection of Ingham Street. Constitution. Motion that the order be received and sent to the Public Works Committee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the DPW for a public hearing. On the motion. On motion. 
And so, you know, residents have been complaining for years about the speeding on Irene Street, but recently been getting a lot of complaints about the people blowing the stop sign on Ingham Street. Um, so a couple of residents asked me if they could put rumble strips in. And actually, while I was on vacation down in Virginia and a few other states, um, this is actually not uncommon. Uh, I happened to come across a few. So uh, the idea wasn't too far-fetched as it is a practice in other communities and states. So I'm hoping maybe we can do it as a test um, over there and see if it does anything to alleviate the speeding, probably, and the uh, people avoiding the stop signs by blowing through them. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Concert Krampitz. Is this going to Public Works or is this going to DPW? To public Works. I asked for it to go to Public Works since we have a meeting coming up. Do you want to amend okay. it? Okay. All right. It. I just wanted to make, because the order says DPW. that DPW, but yeah, you want to send to Public Works. But it's probably better going to committee. Public Thank you. Better. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? I comment from the floor. Oh, Council Lopez. Thank you. Um, I actually really love this idea, um, and I might have to, you know, borrow it. And and I have some on over on my side of Willamette. Yeah. I think this is also something that could be useful, maybe on Chicopee Street as well. Um, I know that speed bumps are, are what's being requested, but perhaps we could have some rumble strips too in the meantime. Um, and on some of the other streets, like Meadow Street, you know, there there could be some rumble streets, rumble strips installed there. So thank you for diligently working to find uh, solutions when we're told no to other solutions. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Cramp, a second time. I will give you the rumble strips in front of my house. How's that? <laughs> thank you. Any other comments? Any comments from the Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Clam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Dillinton? They're noisy, I'm sure. Zagrowski? Yeah, yes. yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Alkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Novus? Yes. Bouchain? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinant Costello? Yes. 12 yes. The motion passed. Be it ordered that the DPW repaint the crosswalk lines at Ingham and Irene Streets. Councilor Cushane. Motion that the order be received and sent to the DPW for implementation. Motion made a second that the order be received, sent to the DPW for crosswalk lines uh, being in Irene Street being painted. On the motion. Yeah, this is a crosswalk that's used by students going to Bellamy. Um, so, and they're pretty well faded. I think they were painted once about four or five years ago. Thank uh, you. When I asked for them. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Tobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Brady? Yes. Penny at the stove. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have an order, an order to add to the following in schedule, parking prohibited here at a corner, Broadway Street. Concert Zigorowski. Motion that the order be sent to, to order and for, implement, for uh, implementation. Send it where? Ordinance. ordinance. Motion made and second that the order be received, sent to the ordinance com committee for a public hearing on the motion. Yeah, we've got some problems at Albert Avenue, people parking where people should be crossing. So uh, I discussed this with uh, Councilman Krampitz, well, and I also spoke to our city engineer, and uh, they agree that uh, they're in the process of getting the sign put there. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Billington? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinant Costello? Yes. 12 yes. yes. And the motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. Parking prohibited here at a corner, Claremont Ave. Councilor Brooks. Make a motion that the proposed ordinance be received and re referred to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the ordinance committee re uh, request be received and sent to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. On the motion. 
We'll take it up in committee. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments on Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Falkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Thobus. Yes. Hussein. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Penny at Costello. Yes. 12 yes. Motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. Park prohibited here to corner Edgewood Ave. Concert Brooks. Same course. Motion made second. The order be received and sent to ordinance coming for a public hearing on the motion. Take it up in committee. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Is Hussein? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes. The motion passed. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. Parking prohibited here at four. Claremont out. Councilor Brooks. Same course. Motion made any second that the proposed ordinance be sent to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. On the motion. We'll take it up to committee. Roll call, please. Oh, any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes. yes. Motion passed. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule, isolated stop sign, Claremont Avenue. Councilor Brooks. Same yes. course. Motion made second that the proposed ordinance committee, uh, ordinance committee request be received and sent to the ordinance committee for public hearing. On the motion. Take it up with committee. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Thobus? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finney at Yes. 12 yes. Motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. Parking prohibited here to corner Taylor Street. Concert Brooks. Taylor is uh, oh, Concert Dobas. Taylor but, Street. Um, Concert Dobas. Motion that the order is received and sent to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. Motion made a second that the order be received and sent to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, we'll deal with it in committee. Thank you, Councilor LaFlam, for your work. Uh, um, sent to the committee. Uh, any other comments on the floor? <clears throat> any comments on Zoom? Roll call. President LaFlam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Benet Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule, isolated stop sign, Taylor Street. Concert Dobas. Same course, Mr. President. Motion made a second to send the proposed ordinance change to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. On the motion. Uh, we'll deal with it in committee. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. 
Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampus? Yes. Dobas? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny and Yes. 12 yes. Motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. Parking prohibited this side of the street, Pleasant Street. Councillor Brooks. Make a motion that the proposed ordinance be received and sent to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the proposed ordinance be sent to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. On the motion. We'll take it up in printing. Thank you. Any comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President O'Flam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Billiton? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Talkier? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Lebrie? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. Parking prohibited, Asinop Street. I'm oh, sorry, Asinop Avenue. Councilor Roy. Yeah, this is uh, something that was requested by the uh, Rumble Seat Bar and Grow up there to try to relieve some of the uh, parking problems there, but we'll take it up in committee. You, you want to send, we'll it, send to it to ordinance, ordinance please? Yes. Motion made and second that the proposal is ordinance change be sent to the Ordinance Committee for public hearing. On the motion, you just said it. Any other comments from the floor? Councilor Lopez. Through the chair, could I just have some clarification. What exactly are you trying to accomplish with this one, What's Councilor Roy? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish with this one? Are you trying to add parking or remove parking? We're going to remove parking on one side of the street because, you know, uh, at Azenoff up there going to McKinley, they're, they're parking on both sides of the street, so he's trying to relieve the, the uh, congestion there. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any comments from Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dobas? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passed. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. Park prohibited any time, Westover Road. Councilor Zigorowski. A uh, motion that this be sent to the ordinance committee for the first reading. Motion made is second that the order be received sent to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. On the motion. Yeah, on the motion. This is something that I worked with uh, Councilman Dobaz when he was on vacation. Evidently, there's tractor trailer trucks that are parking on the city property, and I've already spoken to uh, our engineer, Bob Ellis, and the DPW superintendent, and um, they're in favor that this should be done. Um, okay. Um, I'd like to talk on this for a quick second. Motion to allow the president to speak. Thank you. Roll call, please. I got to really talk. President of the plan. Abstain. Roy. Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagrowski? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Begrudgingly, yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Duchesne? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny and Costello? Yes. Eleven yes, one abstention. Thank you. I just I just want to bring up and I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but um, I, uh, Councilor, I mean Councilor, <laughs> Mr. Boyer's here. So uh, we've been working, and we'll, we'll correlate with you on this one too. Is I've been working with Westover, uh, the DBW, the engineer, and because of the their, they don't want no parking along that whole thing, and they're already proposing uh, to to close it from Westover all the way to to where to the dog park, dog. no parking. Okay. So that's being put together. So we'll send this, but we'll have another one going there. My point to you, okay. they yeah. want to get it close all one-sided there. What's happening, what's happening with this is that uh, 
the truck drivers are parking there and they're backing down Donahue Road and they're yeah. causing you're a lot gonna, of problems. Well, un unfortunately, one of, the, one of the things on this is you probably won't see as many because this is where the, I believe it was the mail truck that's going out of business or closing mm -hmm. is mostly affected that whole area mm -hmm. uh, that I was just told. So that's I just want to let you know that we do have it, okay. it being processed. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. Roll call, please. President McClain. Yes. 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 Roy. Yes. Billiton. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Falkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Duchesne. Yes. Brady. Yes. 